Good morning, good morning, welcome to Sewing Street with me, Vicky Carroll. Oh my word, how warm is it? Those heat wave deals yesterday made it worthwhile. You need to open the window up there, Laura. Laura's producing today, which is very exciting. Uh, normally at this point, Hannah always cracks open the window and you can hear the birds sing, it's lovely. So definitely do that, Laura. Need to, I just, did anybody sleep last night? I think we were all just, Laura slept really well. And I think um, uh, Tom, who's producer over at Drew Maker, he said he had a good nine hours last night. I probably had about three hours. So apologize in advance. It's gorgeous though, isn't it? Uh, right. We've got loads to tell you about today. We've got so much coming up, but first we start as we always do with the early bird. Uh, well, yes, I didn't have an early bird, so we've made sure that this one is very, very good to make sure that everyone could make the most of it who missed uh, having an early bird yesterday. So, pack of four fat quarters for five pounds 49 it is your early bird special if ever you go to exhibitions or any of the big craft fair shows and you see stalls that have fat quarters at this sort of price point you need to go in with a high-vis jacket and a whistle don't you uh, you really really do to be able to get them at these sort of prices so you can get them today at the comfort of your own sofa or hopefully maybe you're still in bed cuddling up with a cup of coffee I was saying, oh, I did have a cup of tea this morning. I said, it's too hot for tea. And Joe was like, no, actually, it cools you down having a hot drink, apparently. Five pounds, 49 for all four Tartan Fat Quarters. Now, they're not printed, they're woven. They're absolutely beautiful. What does that make a price for per Fat Quarter? 137 I can officially say I think that is the lowest price I've done any Fat Quarters since I've been here at Sewing Street. Got to be. Last time we had these, they completely sold out and now you've got them at an early bird price. Back in stock at a new lower price of £5.49. And they're lovely, aren't they? I'm thinking if you've got like a wicker basket, picnic basket, these would be lovely to line in this. In, in, they'd be really nice. This one, I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to see on screen, but it's like a fleecy sort of texture. It's really lovely to be able to work and sew with different textures. I love it. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? You've then also got, this one's got nice colours. So that one's more of your greens and this one's got your blues. Again, woven, £5.49. You're looking at less than £1.50 a fat quarter. Try working with different textures of fabrics. Maybe for soft furnishings, these are lovely. They'd make nice cushions, wouldn't they? What about for toy making? Toy making or for pets? Yeah, absolutely. Little pet makes. What about little clothes for dolls at these sort of prices? Sewing, uh, if you're just starting out, is absolutely really affordable. Normally, you know, if you are looking at more of your designer fabrics, it can be quite costly. That is one of the, no, I'm going to go as far as saying I think it's the lowest price point I've done on any fat quarter since I've been here. So that is a bold statement because we always do great prices. So uh, Laura did a bit of a uh, search this morning and had a look at how much you can find this for elsewhere. This actual fat quarter pack she found on a very, very famous site. Um, there you go, you know the one. And they are £8.44, £8.44. There you go, £8.44. Today, it's just da, 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 five pounds. Oh, da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. He's just doing it on purpose, isn't he? Five pounds, 49. There you go. I love this. Oh, by the way, Jan, thank you so much for your message last night. I was um, tossing and turning, trying to sleep. Oh, this is so annoying. And then I saw that I had a message come through and Jan just said to me, do not look at the Sewing Street fan page because I know you've been posting spoilers of who won the sewing bee and I didn't watch it even though I was still awake I could have absolutely watched it but I tried to get into bed too early and um yeah so I haven't watched it yet I will be catching up later uh this afternoon or this evening but I'm excited was it good was it good was it good I'm going to leave that with you, but do make sure you check out as soon as you can. Just be aware, when we had this in last, it completely sold out and it wasn't an early bird special price. So it's definitely worth making the most of it. Um, today, you can shop with us via our website. Oh, today's show, 
Let me tell you what's coming up first today. This first hour, we've got Sally Stevens. She was here yesterday in the studio recording this demo for us using a brand new Creative Grid ruler, the Wedding Ring Ruler. It's an amazing Creative Grid ruler. It's so versatile, loads you can do with it, and Sally is fantastic at explaining exactly how you use it. So that's coming up with some great bundles this hour. At nine o'clock, we've got lovely Catherine back. She recorded as well yesterday, a great demo on the Shaded Arrows cushion. Um, that's a beautiful, beautiful cushion and it comes with a lovely Alison glass fabrics. Then at 10 o'clock, Bargain Central, everything under £10. We're raiding the stock and bringing you everything under £10 in that uh, 10 o'clock hour. Now, also, uh, if you want to go to our website, did you notice yesterday's show? If you missed yesterday's show, John Cole Morgan offered you the most amazing heatwave deals. They are still on the website. Have a look, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to Jewelry Maker, which is our sister page. Don't worry, our sister channel. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. So this is our landing page. If you watch live, that's how you do it. Click play. We're not going to do it now because you'll hear me twice. Uh, you don't want that, do you? Uh, you scroll down. If you want to sign up for our newsletter, you can do it there. We'll keep you in the loop of everything that's going on. And then, straight away, the heatwave deals appear first. They were brilliant. The 550, uh, or, or the, uh, the 550 there, you've also got the panels, the deal on the creative grid squares and the rulers. You've got the options to get the poplin bundle, poplin uh, cotton weight, the beautiful fabrics, uh, the bond web applique uh, panels. They were brilliant as well. There was loads yesterday. So they're still available at the moment. Then if you carry on scrolling down, it will come to our sewing machine range. All of them are there. And then you get to products from today's show. So you can already start shopping on any of those. The, of the wedding ring ruler you saw there, I know a lot of people have been asking for that. The, the modern rainbow quilt book has been so, so popular. That's available as well. And if you want to get yourself some parkings uh, under £10 at 10 o'clock, we'll be there as well. Uh, what else do I need to tell you? If you want to message Laura today, Laura's our producer, she's upstairs. Uh, we've got an in-house email address. Have you logged into the emails, Laura? Yeah, studio at sewingstreet.com is the email address. Studio at sewingstreet.com. Laura's asking to send loads of pictures, get them all in, and we'll be able to show them on air very promptly. If you want to send in any of your photographs, maybe um, any of your gardening pictures, were you sewing out in the garden yesterday? What are you planning on doing today during this hot weather? Are you staying in in the air con or with the fans on? I didn't have a fan yesterday. And just having the window open just wasn't enough. No breeze. <laughs> Studio at sewingstreet.com. Studio sewingstreet.com. By the way, I'm not moaning at all because I love this weather. Can't moan, can I? Can't moan. So this first hour, as I said, uh, Sally Stevens, who is amazing. You know how much I love Sally Stevens. She came in yesterday to record um, a, an incredible demo based all around this ruler. So this is your wedding ring. Uh, creative grid ruler. It is so, so versatile. It makes lots of different blocks uh, like this. So this is the block that Sally had uh, put together. She's going to be showing you how to do it. It looks gorgeous in this colourway as well. We've got three different bundles to show you if you want to try it out. But I mean, whether you're doing it into a placemat, whether you're doing it into a quilt, whether you're doing it into cushions, um, there's so many, whether you're having this as a border, using the melons, there's so much to it. It, whether you're using you know strip sets to put them together loads that you're going to be able to do so are you ready because this is the first time that we've ever had it here at sewing street and i know how popular in the world of creative grids how popular this ruler is it creates such an amazing effect in fact if i show you the back of it if that's okay, Joe, uh, then you can see when these all sort of come together it creates secondary patterns which are just amazing so what I mean? 
Amazing. £37.49. and pence. Now, it sounds quite an investment, and don't get me wrong, yes, I understand it is, but also, if you look after your creative grids, they will last the test of time. And the reason they're called creative grids is because there's so much that you can do with them. So they come with instructions. They also come with a QR code, a QR reader on the front, like this uh, QR code, which if you scan that on your smartphone or just type in on YouTube or Pinterest, wedding ring templates, creative grids then you'll be able to find so many different examples of what you can do with it uh, otherwise get creative the reason they're called creative rule, grid rulers is you can do so much and you can get creative and start designing your own blocks and your own quilts it comes with three different well four different parts really you've got the melon you've then got the wedding ring uh, itself you've then also got this sort of arch shape and then you've got that center uh, the centerpiece as well so all of those four come for 37.49 with your instructions with the QR reader like with all of our normal creative grids they've got this non slip grip they are so precise so accurate they're made for quilters designed for quilters uh, and Sally's going to be talking all through exactly how to use it during the demo so just wanted to introduce that so when you uh, you see Sally talking about it you can add to your basket the three bundles this is the bundle that um, that Sally was working with and it's absolutely gorgeous no You've got the stars in two different scales of print. You've got the florals of Canning Days, Moda. You've got your solids. Uh, this is a really lovely combination of colours, actually. This is what I love about our team, bearing in mind, sometimes when you're looking on the website, I know it's quite hard to pick out, right, what's going to work together. Our team have sort of done the hard work for you. It's just £30. That's so good. £30.44, one, two, three, four, five, six of your half metres. So you've got your uh, lovely Rose and Hubble stars, which is a slightly lighter weight. It is a poplin weight, um, but it's absolutely fine still to quilt with, just so you're aware it's, it, it's a slightly different weight. This one's then your Moda Canning Days range. It's so beautiful. This is, again, another poplin weight, a Rose and Hubble, gorgeous quality, 100% cotton. Uh, that goes really nicely with the canning days. Another Moda. Two of your gorgeous Moda fabrics in this bundle. That's amazing. You've then also got, again, your Poplin weight spot, Rose and Hubble, and then also that lovely, lovely, like, um, very lime green, isn't it? Three metres in total, and this is the one that Sally's working with. Right, so just to point out, this one on the website, it's shown as 26.49. Ah, okay. I'll try and find out. We're just trying to find out which one it's supposed to be, and I'll update you as soon as I can. But um, yeah, the website, I think it's, we think the website's potentially wrong. I think it could be 3044. Bear with us, we'll find out. Um, yeah, we'll let you know. So that's the first bundle. Let's come back to that. The rainbow bundle. Oh, this is brilliant, especially at the moment. There's so many people who are still asking every day, have you got any more of the rainbow bundles? Have you got any more of the rainbow panels? Even if you're not working with the creative grade wedding ring uh, ruler, what an amazing bundle for your stash. If, you're, if you've got a, a, maybe a quilt in mind and you've been waiting for a rainbow bundle like this, this almost mottled effect, can you see that lovely texture? I, it's not, um, it's, it's not um, texture to touch, it's texture to the eye. It's absolutely beautiful. So it's like a texture print, it's like a mottle effect. So you have your lovely green. This is chartreuse, half a metre. Half a metre of lilac. Half a metre of tangerine. That was really nice, isn't it? Half a metre of royal blue. Half a metre of sunshine. And then also half a metre of bright pink. £22.99. I've got a feeling that bundle is going to be extremely popular. It is the most affordable of all three bundles. You're getting a lot of fabric for your money. Um, but it is absolutely gorgeous. Those colours work so well together. And then, if you're feeling quite indulgent, if you are feeling... Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. What I would potentially do with this is I would mix in, we'll come back with this in a bit, as we do want to get to the demo soon, but I would maybe mix in some of your solid fabrics and make this go really far, because look at how indulgent this is. Moda, gorgeous. Shafakani, hope I'm saying that, is that right? 
Chafakani range. It's been so popular indeed. £44.49. Half a metre of all of these very, very opulent prints. They just look so regal, don't they? So rich. It reminds me of like a... If you were to do it in this colourway, it would just look like one of those escape to the country. Yeah, escape to the country, stately home. I've been watching that escape to the chateau. Is it chateau one? £44 and 49 pence. And they are all designer moda prints, every single one of them. It's very nice indeed. Maybe, again, an, a different uh, project in mind. There's no instructions with these bundles. There's, remember, it's just about sort of getting creative with your creative grid rulers. There's in instructions that come with the ruler, and Sally's going to be able to talk you through exactly, you know, how to utilise it. Um, so... Have a look, jot down today's date so you can watch it back as well then uh, on YouTube. Should we have a watch of Sally? Don't forget to check out of your baskets, enjoy the demo and I'm back after this. Hello, my name is Sally Stevens and I'm back here again today to show you a fabulous technique that makes life so much easier for all of you that have wanted to do a double wedding ring quilt or just a small double wedding ring block and we're going to have great fun with this because we've got a ruler that makes it all so easy for you. This is the ruler. It comes in four pieces. A large centre one. What's called a melon shape. A curved arch shape. And a little kite shape. And these come on a card backing like this, which has lots of ideas for you to use this ruler in lots of different ways. And I'm just going to show you a couple of those ways today. But it makes something that looks very complicated so much easier and so much more fun. And every single part that you make will be accurate. And I've got a few tips to help you with that as well. So I'll just move that out of the way for the moment. On the table here, I have a quilt that was made some time ago. Um, I made it with some applique on it, so it's a little bit different to what I'm going to be showing you today. But this is the kind of effect that you can create, and that's called a double, double wedding ring block. And the rings interlock, you can use different fabrics in every part of it. You can make them similar. You can make them all in one fabric if you choose. And it's traditionally a lovely gift to give for someone who is getting married um, and as it's my 25th wedding anniversary this year that seems uh, an appropriate thing for me to be demonstrating. So here we go. To start with we need to cut out our pieces and as I explained there is a large centre piece and I'm using the background fabric to cut that out. Now just in case you weren't sure with a, um, a template like that how easily it will cut out. I've got a bit of um, leftover fabric here which I can demonstrate with. So this is an odd shaped bit of fabric but obviously yours will, uh, will arrive looking much neater than that. So it's a creative grids ruler designed by a lady called Judy Niemeyer. And so like all Creative Grids rulers, it's got the um, rough sections on the back that help it to grip when it's on the fabric so it doesn't slide around. And that's really useful. When I first made this, and I've made several of these now, I thought, oh, I'm probably going to need a really tiny um, rotary cutter like this one, which is a 28 millimeter. And yes, that works brilliantly. But I was also pleased to discover that the normal 45 mil cutting um, rotary cutter also works and I'll demonstrate that just to prove it to you. You see the curve is designed in such a way that it's really easy for you to trim even with the larger blade. And so on. So you can see how easy that is to cut with either a 45mm or a 28mm. I haven't tried it with a 60mm, I think that would probably be a little bit too large, 
but do give it a go if that's what you've got. Most people have one or, or, or other of these and then perhaps have a 60 mil for cutting through thicker layers. So I've cut out the centre from the background fabric and if we go back to the template, I'm hoping you can see, if I turn it around this way, I'll just show you one layer, That'll make it easier. So there's your, your piece cut out and if you look on your corners of the ruler, there's a little hole also in the centre. Another one on that corner, on this corner, on this corner and each of the sides. So you mark those with a pencil or with a disappearing uh, fabric pen. For the demonstration I've used quite a, a dark felt pen in places so that you'd be able to see a little bit more easily what I've done but I wouldn't do that normally in case it does show because occasionally it, it, it does. But you can see hopefully on here that we've made pencil marks on each of the corners and on the sides. And those are very important. They will join with the other pieces to help them match perfectly. So that's the center piece. Next we come also in background fabric to what's called on the ruler a melon shape. These are brilliant for the wedding ring quilt, but they're also really nice templates if you want to do larger plique leaves. Um, on this quilt I used very, very small uh, leaves, but if you wanted to make a larger applique effect, these make a really nice leaf shape. So you can use this these, these ruler templates for more than one thing. So again, we draw around the melon shape and that also has holes at the two ends and the two sides and we mark those as well. So we've got one of each of those now. Then we have, this is called the unit AB template. I tend to call it the arc template. It, um, it just seems more, more meaningful to me. And we cut again our fabrics, either with the small cutter or again with the larger one. It's perfectly good. Now, depending on how big you want either your quilt or your project to be, the instructions on the back will give you some idea of how many you need to cut. And for, for each single block, you would need to cut eight of these arcs, four of the melons, one of the centerpieces, and two, four, six, eight, two, yes, eight of these kite pieces. Just have to see and work that out then. The kite pieces are what joins the two arcs with the melon in the center. So that's the kite piece. I'll show you in a different fabric, it'll probably show a bit better. There you go, so that's the kite piece. And I'll be showing you how to join them together because this is a curved piecing technique with fabrics on the bias, so you do need to have. Um, a little bit of care so that you don't stretch them after you've cut them, but also I've got a really neat technique of how to piece them together. With this kite piece, it is directional. You've got a fairly flat corner there, but you've got quite a pointed, sharper pointed one there. The sharper point always goes to the centre facing the melon. So what I've done on mine, just to make it easy for me to remember, is I've just put a little tiny bit of blue paper I've just taped on there to make it a little bit more obvious which is the pointed edge. It's fairly obvious anyway, but you know, when you're cutting out lots of pieces and sewing them together, you might just miss. So I always put that little marker on there. Same principle as before. We mark the four corners of your little pieces. And then when you come to join them together, you can just refer to your template to help you remember which one points towards the melon. That's a handy little tip. All seams are sewn with a quarter inch seam. 
and I tend to use a quarter inch foot on the machine for that, which is what I've got here. Um, with most machines, the quarter inch foot helps you with your quarter inch, but it isn't magic. You also need, if you can, to move your needle across, which I can do on this one, to the right side. And then when you're stitching your quarter inch, test it on a couple of scrap bits of fabric first to make sure it really is a quarter of an inch. Because just because that's a quarter inch foot doesn't mean to say that it will stitch that way. The difference can be caused by the size of your needle, the thickness of your thread, um, and the, the bulk of whatever you're sewing on as well. So I always test it first before we go, we go ahead. So now, Show you on this one probably shows up a little bit easier. So this, these are my assembled melon shapes, and I'll show you how to do this in just a second. But just so that you can see how effectively it goes together, the principle is that we create four of these. We sew one of the star shapes into the middle, and that creates an apple core shape. That looks like an apple core. And with the apple core, then we join on the two sides to create your block. Now I've used all the same fabrics on the outside here and the same fabrics on the inside. And I've just alternated the greens. It's a nice idea when you get this home and you've got your fabrics, just to sit down and have a little think where you want them all to go. So for example, on this one that was made before, you can see the single circle of one fabric there, but then these are different fabrics because they create new circles that follow on for the rest of the quilt. So just have a little think about that before you start sewing them together. And you could do it completely all scrappy if you wanted to, but the best effect for a wedding ring quilt is lots of circles. So that's, uh, that's the effect we're trying to create here. So here we go. Step one, we need to sew go for a bright pink one. We need to sew one of these to our melon. We've marked all the dots, so it'll be wrong sides together. And with a pin, put your pin through the dot on the melon and out through the dot on the arc. And I always just do that little technique with my pin so that if it's to one side, you know you haven't got those two pieces accurately. And if the pin is straight, then you know that those two dots are joined up accurately. So then we can push the pin right the way through. Now the traditional way of making this block and joining these pieces, because this is a curved edge and that's a curved edge, how on earth are those two going to join together? It just looks impossible. But they are the same length, so they will join together. Now, you're still quite welcome to do this technique if it's what you prefer, and it is what was the original technique but I'm going to show you a quicker way after this, which is to put our pin through the dots again. Make sure that's straight, pin through. And then what we would do to get these two pieces to join together is to kind of ease them and squinch them together and put another pin And another pin. And keep going, lots of pins, until you've got that more or less tamed. But I found that even though you could put twice as many pins as this, it still doesn't always come quite right. And you've got to sew, either sew over these pins, which is never a good idea, or take them out as you go, which stands the risk of moving it. I like simple, I like quick, and I like easy, and I like reliable. So, 
this method, which was taught to me by a lovely lady called Sally Ablett, is to use a glue pen. And I would never, ever be without glue pens these days. It's um, a fabric gluing pen. It's a special kind of, of pen. It doesn't leave it. They come in different colours. I think there's um, blue, pink, yellow and um, white, I think. Uh, but when they dry, they dry completely clear, so you won't be able to see them. But while you're using them, you can see them, which is really, really helpful. So I've still pinned the center, as we had before. But now what I'm going to do is put glue on the fabric to glue them together instead of pinning them. Now I've found, having done a bit of trial and error, that it's actually easier to glue the melon and ease the arc onto it than the other way around. If you find it easier the other way, that's absolutely fine. But that's just the way I found. And it also seemed to make it less stretchy because this is a bias edge. That's a bias edge. Very easy to, to, to stretch them. So we just put a very thin line of glue. And it stays tacky for a little while, so you don't have to rush. It's not wet. It's a dry glue. But it is a special one for fabrics. It's non-toxic, it doesn't mark. And if you make a mistake, you can just pull it off and start again. Okay. Now you can pin the other end if you wish. Which I will do that just to keep it in one place while I'm doing the other side. Another thin line of the fabric glue. And ease it into place again. Don't pull or tug or stretch, just gently ease it. The glue acts like a bit of a grabber to pull it in. So you're not wrestling with it whilst you're pinning, whilst you're gluing. Now, if you want to, you can pin as well if you, if you felt more comfortable doing that but you don't need to because the glue's got that held firmly in place. Okay. So now we go to the sewing machine. I'll take the pin out of there. As I say, we've got a quarter inch foot on with a quarter inch seam. And off we go. Now, all I would say is if you're new to this and you haven't done curve piecing before or just to be on the safe side, really, go a little bit slower than you normally would. And as you stitch along, you'll see you can flatten the fabric. Follow the curve. to the other end. So there are the first two pieces joined together. And when you open them out, they create the first part of our curve. So I'm going to press that before we do the second part. Bring my iron over, ironing board over. Now I'm a great believer in setting the seams when you sew any pieces together. And what that means is that before you press the fabrics open, as they will be, press them as you have sewn them. So there it is sewn, and now we're going to press it. So obviously you don't want to press all over the fabric because you'd make creases in it. So we just need to press the actual seam the stitches of the seam. Now that does a couple of things. It helps the thread to sink into the fabric and make a much neater and flatter effect when you turn it out. And that, that therefore means you will have a more accurate seam every time. Because if I was using quite a thick thread, 
and this is a standard um, standard machine sewing thread. But if I was using a thick thread, that could make that a little bit thicker there. So if I don't set the set the stitches in, when I fold that back, I'll probably just lose a fraction of even a millimetre. But if you imagine that across a huge, long, wide quilt, you could lose inches. So accuracy, that's why accuracy is so important. It's not just to make it look nice, it's to make it fit together properly. And so you'll be satisfied with the end result. So there we go, so that's pressed. We'll move on to the next piece. So for the second arc, we'll go with, uh, with this floral, a pretty floral green one there. So that's what we want to go on this side. First thing to do before we sew that onto this melon is to add our little kite pieces. And I'll go with, what shall I go with? How about a yellow and a pink? No, yellow and a green. How about that? <laughs> now then, here's where I say, not sure which way that goes, which way that fits on. Go back to your little template, which I've put the mark on. It's the, the narrower point, points towards the melon. So we know to turn that that way. So we know it's going the right direction. Again, we've got all our dots marked, so I'll just pin those. Now with this, you will see that you have a tiny bit of this one hanging over this edge and a tiny bit of the underneath one. And that will help your seams to join up more neatly when you sew it. So I'm just going to sew, put, put one pin in this and sew it for purposes of time. Losing my foot pedal. Okay. Draw off the loose threads. And there you go. Can you see now that it joins up perfectly, even though you had a little bit overhanging on each edge to start with. So again, I'm going to set the seam. Actually, I'll set the other end on first because then I can do them both at the same time. So again, the narrow pointed edge to the center. A little bit of an overhang to each side, which the, the, little, the little dots you put your pin through will indicate that. We'll set the next piece on. And there again, it's nice and neat. So I'm going to set the seams on both sides. And you can press either towards the arc or towards the points. I don't really think it makes that much difference, to be honest. So on the first part, um, I've pressed the seam towards the arc. That does seem to work better with the melon. But if you're using a very pale fabric here and a dark one here, you may want to do pressing to the dark side the other way around. But this is pressing to the dark side with the fabrics we have here. So on these ends, I don't think it makes a great deal of difference. But I did press to the outside because then you're pressing towards a smaller and squarer piece of fabric and you're not stretching this curved piece any more than needs be. OK, and just press it from the front as well, just to make sure. And that makes just make sure you haven't put a little pleat in there. So now we can join the 
these pieces together. And again, it's the same principle. Pin in the middle. To join the dots. Check that it's straight and level. Okay, push the pin through. Now, what I would do as we're gluing this is also double check when we get to this point that these seams do cross. And they also will need to match at the little dots. So you might want to pin those as well. So if you look here, you'll see that these two seams actually cross slightly. You're not going straight through the seam on both. You're going pretty much through the seam on the melon side, but a quarter of an inch away on the arc side. I'll glue before I pin that. So another line of glue. And this, this is really nice um, dry glue. It doesn't, it's not messy, it's not sticky. You can rub it off and you can wash it off. It's, um, it's my favorite ever tool. And pin through there. That's it. And then just glue the last little piece. And again, you'll see there's a tiny bit of overhang. Repeat on the other side. Ease it down. Again, I find it easy to do with the melon on the, the bottom of the layers. Pin that through. that into place. Oops. Now I've just made a little pleat in there, so as I've said before, you can just pull that apart and put it back again. The glue is very forgiving. And so easy to use. I did find actually, because I do a lot of my sewing um, at this time of year outside, and I found that the glue pen did start to go a little bit soft. It didn't completely melt or anything. So I just popped it in the fridge for about half an hour and it was absolutely fine again. There we go. So I'll stitch this again right from the end. Take the pins out as we go. Now my tendency when I'm making um, a larger project or a, a quilt is to do what's called chain piecing, which is to do the same step over and over and over again, and then assemble that with the next step and so on. You can do that with this, there's not a problem at all. But if you're going to do that, it could be easy for you to get the layer to the pieces mixed up. So what I would do and what I have done in the past is just do a little bit of a sketch, which I have one, I think, here. So I did a little bit of a sketch of how I wanted it to look and I just put some numbers on it for the numbers of the fabrics. So if then you're doing chain piecing and you can do this one and this one and this one and this one, you can do them all one after the other, you know then that they will match together when you've finished. Otherwise, if you just trust to luck, and I can assure you that I've tried it, it can go wrong and you'll have to one pick. And 
Unpicking is not very pleasant at the best of times, but unpicking curved seams is really not good because it does tend to distort the fabrics. Um, so a useful tip in any case when you're sewing with curves is to use something like Best Press, which I do use a lot of actually, and I will use on this now. So the first thing to do is set the seam. I'll just put a little spray on. You hardly need any. I, I love it and I've used it a lot. Um, it lasts a long, long time. It's a better thing than spray starch, I find, because it's um, less sort of toxic smelling and um, doesn't make the fabric too stiff. It makes it firmer, but not hard and stiff. And I'm going to press that out. And I've got a couple of little pleats in there, a couple of little tucks. So that's another brilliant idea for best press. If you spray that on, you'll get those out in no time. One of the things I find it really useful for, if you've got a bolt of fabric or a fat quarter or something similar that's been folded for a long time, when you come to open it out, it still seems to have a crease that you can never get out. A squirt of that magic disappears. So there you go, that's our first melon shape completed. So the next step then, and if I go back to the original one that I'd started, so you can see it coming to completion. I'm going to join these pieces to the centerpiece. Works in exactly the same way. You just stitch, through, pin rather, through the, the dots in the centre, glue as before, melon on the bottom and then ease that around. Now I've done that one already on this, so I've sewn two of these melons to either side of the centre star piece to create the apple core shape and that's the base shape. Now, same principle with the next two arcs. You could have them as I've done them so you've got a complete circle here or you could turn them around if you just fancied a little bit of a change, especially if that was just going to perhaps be a placemat. So if time allows I will stitch those together but in the meantime I wanted to show you something else which I, I thought when I'd finished doing some of this what am I going to do with a lot of these scrap little bits of fabric that were left. So I cut them all into strips same size. I think it was two inches possibly, yeah. And I sewed them together into a panel like that, just a simple strip set. And then when I got my arc template out, I laid that on it. Cut it out. If you make a bigger piece of basic fabric, you'll get more, more arcs out of it. That's where the rotating cutting mat comes in handy. And you've got a ready pieced pretty arc. And that's what that one looked like when it was finished. So that's another little technique you can do using up just scraps if you want to. And again, in a, in a sort of table mat type arrangement, that could look really pretty. And there are lots of other ideas, as I've said, on the back of the packet. So we'll just go for sewing these quickly together if we can. Losing my pins. There we go, nice and level. And a bit more glue. You don't need to use a lot. I'm being fairly generous to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to turn that back. I always seem to find the 
It works better with the melons on the bottom. And again, we'll have the join through the dots. Dots are really important, so don't miss those out. As I say, I've made several of these. I've made there's three quilts now of this sort. Don't skimp on that step. It's really, really helpful. They've been so cleverly designed, these rulers, as, as the creative grid ones always are. They're my, they're my favourites. Okay. Are we okay for... Okay. So I'll just do this side and you'll get the principle of it. You see, um, and you'd obviously take a little bit more time and, and that at home, but the design of the templates, the design of the where the dots go and all the rest is so clever that it really makes this such a, a relatively easy technique compared with doing it the traditional pinning method. And if you do get to this stage where you've glued it and the phone rings or you realise you've got to nip out to get your hair cut, um, you, you can leave that glue and it will just stay stuck like that. I'm waiting for two things at the moment to get my hair cut and to get a new pair of glasses. When both of those are done, I'll be able to see much better <laughs> always round. So here we are. Quickly stitching round. quite properly so bear with me if this is a little bit wonky on this side. It probably is going to be a little bit wonky but you'll get the idea. Yeah that's gone that's gone rather wonky on that end. It's fine on that end but it's gone a bit wonky at that side. I just uh, pulled the pin out too soon. So you can see and I thought these would make a nice placemat actually. You could quilt them bit of wadding, backing fabric, a little bit of bias binding. You need bias binding uh, around the edges because these are curved edges. You could make some lovely placemats. And as I say, you've got various options to play with as well. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. It's so lovely to see her, isn't it? Honestly, she's just such an amazing teacher. And it's really good to have a bit of um, a, a look at what we can do with the, the wedding ring uh, template. Remember, it's brand new today. This has never actually been on air here at Sewing Street before. And I know how many people love it. So if you haven't yet checked out on yours, please, please do, as that is very, very popular, as you can imagine. And have a bit of a play around with it. See what you can do with the different shapes. Uh, I know it's a good chance to get practising sewing your curves, isn't it? £37.49, as, as Sally is explaining, I mean, they do have really lovely clear instructions on the reverse, but jot down today's date and you can watch back the show that you've just seen with Sally at any point. It's £37.49. So... That is your brand new Creative Grid Ruler. We love it. Now, I told you I'd update you on the price on the bundle. I'm pleased to say we were wrong and the website was right. It means that you're going to get this bundle even lower. So uh, there you go, new price. It was supposed to be £30.44, now it's £26.44. And if you have a look on the, the website, um, I don't know how or why this happened, but it somehow got reduced. So initially was... £33.44. Uh, if you go to www.allthews.sewingstreet.com, then you'll see there. Look, it was supposed to be. That was the price that we were given. The graphics were made with £30.44. £30, but there you go. Kit saving today. Saving of £3.95. That's 
Nice little saving, isn't it? And um, remember, you're getting half a metre of line, half a metre of your Rose and Hubble spot, half a metre of your Moda Canning Days, half a metre of your Rose and Hubble Poplar and White Star, half a metre again of your Moda, and half a metre of the Ditsy Stars. All three metres, half a metre of each of them for £26.49. and pence. They look beautiful together. That was the, 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 uh, the bundle that... Sally was working with. That's four pound forty a half meter. Fantastic. And bearing in mind you've got two half meters of Moda canning days in there, two designer fabrics. Gorgeous. All right now, another very popular one, as predicted, is this. It's been the most popular so far. It's only twenty two pound ninety nine pence, and that is again for three meters, six half meters. Your chartreuse, lilac, tangerine, royal blue, sunshine and bright pink, all half metre pre-cuts. If you are multi-buying on this, they will come already cut, um, pre-cut into half metres. But I'm just thinking for lots of projects, these are gonna be lovely, aren't they? Colours go really nicely together, but also just to have a new stash because they've got that lovely mottle effect. Really nice. 22 pounds 99, that's three metres. Uh, the other option that we had was the Moda. Now, this is a very, 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 very designer bundle. It is a little bit more, uh, it is obviously a bit more expensive, but every single one of these is designer modal fabric. The pink is beautiful, isn't it? Pink, that one's lovely as well. They all are absolutely beautiful quality as well. I must say, there's a lot of people who, um, who are, well, I know quilters who solely only buy Moda fabrics. They're absolutely gorgeous. That one's lovely as well. And remember, half a metre, I'm just going to open one out so you can see. Half a metre looks like this. So if you are thinking of a different project in mind, there's so much for your money. £44.49. pence. Three whole metres, that's six half metre pre-cuts, six different designs for just £44.49. Um, so again, that one extremely popular. I know how much we all love our motor. Right, so those of you that um, spotted Sally was using the cream as her background, Always amazing for your stash. I know that we don't always show these on air. They're always available on our website, remember. Whenever we do show just a solid colour on air, whether it be white or cream or black or navy, it always sells very, very quickly. Just be aware, it's £3.49 a half metre. This is your chance to just get metres and metres as much as you want uh, and it will be cut off the bolt, especially to what size you want. So if you want, for example, three metres of this, add six units to your order uh, and check out. I will show you what half a metre looks like. So it will just come continuously off the bolt. £3.49 is definitely worth. If you've already purchased something today, then it's only one p and all day long. So it means that you can stock up your stash as soon as you can, maybe for backing cushions or quilts or the backgrounds. If you're doing any fussy cutting and appliqueing onto it, it will look lovely. Uh, any with your, with your Tilda charm packs or who needs to necessarily just use it for this? I mean, this is just always going to be very, very useful to have, especially cream. I always think that white, I love a white background, but it also can be quite stark. Whereas just having that subtle cream just sort of takes the edge off a bit. It's really beautiful, always useful for your stash. And at that price, make the most of it. Okay, so a couple of other tools that Sally was using, um, which actually I must say I was quite surprised to see Sally using this because I only very, I only really talk about the Solan glue pen when I'm talking about English paper piecing or inserting zips for bags uh, or you know fabrics that you don't want to pin like a, a PU or a leather. I'll talk about the Solan glue pen. It's amazing to see a quilter using it. Uh, instead of pinning around that curve, uh, it was absolutely perfect to be able to use this. So the Solan glue pen, whenever we get it in, I almost feel like we need to get uh, one of those, what's it called, a megaphone, stand on the rooftop and say, we have the glue pen back, because it sells out every single time. Price is really, really competitive. And you do also get a refill. So it comes with uh, a glue pen already in there, and then it also comes with a refill. Now it says blue. Don't worry because it dries completely clear. So sometimes you might get a refill that's pink or one that's yellow. Uh, you can simply easily change your cartridge by just, once it's, it's run to the end, roll it right to the top, it pops out and the next one just goes straight in. So it's, it's really, really simple. Um, but it's so, so useful if you are um, 
not wanting to use pins. It's quicker than using pins. It isn't like using a prick stick or another craft glue. It's actually a specially developed glue for fabrics and sewers. So it will also wash out um, if you're using a damp cloth or if you just put your project at the end in the wash, then it, will, it is, um, what is it like water, water soluble? That's it, water soluble. <laughs> Uh, so it will disappear as well with water, will wash out, it's a temporary glue. £6.99, maybe if you're sitting in the garden today doing some English paper piecing, if you're a thread baster normally, try out the Solan glue pen, it will save so much time. Wanted to show that and also she used a water erasable pen. We always like different marking tools. Always um, good for different sort of uses, whether it be a friction pen we've got later under 10, uh, but whether you're using an air erasable or whether you're using uh, a wipe, or, wipe off wash out. Wipe off wash out pen, uh, then this is just £2.49. There's no point in sitting talking about this too long because it's, it is, I mean, it's £2.49. It is what it is. Um, but it, it is going to erase with water. Now, I would always suggest just check that you're happy with how it erases. Uh, before just do a little sample do a bit of a test before you start marking everything out on it but that's a good one to have as well right uh, we're gonna go to a quick break, a break and get the next uh, uh, the next yeah we've got all of this coming up Alison glass beautiful cushions this colorway and the rainbow how nice does that look? Your flying geese units. And you're gonna be able to make two cushions with the bundle that we're gonna to bring to you. Both Alison Glass, both gorgeous, and Catherine's gonna demo it. So don't go anywhere, we're back right after this. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides, suitable for all skill levels, to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember, but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Good morning, welcome back, welcome back. Uh, how is it hotting up where you are? It's starting to get really warm, isn't it? It is getting hot, hot, hot. Don't forget our hot wave deals, by the way. Hot wave, heat wave. 
I hate wave deals that are um, available on the website still from yesterday. Loads of you already checking out, so do make sure you have a look at them. We'll look at them later on. This hour, though, oh, all things rainbows. I love, love, love this book. We've seen this a few times now. It's sold out, and we've uh, we've got it back in. Um, and I think, correct me if I'm wrong at home, but I think this is the first time we've actually made a project from it, which I love. I've been desperate to see some makes from this. There are some beautiful projects. And if you got the bundle, you know, the Mottle Rainbow Bundle in the last hour, definitely get this book because there's going to be some beautiful projects that you're going to be able to do from the book. Now we're going to make the cushion today which is this one. It's your shaded arrows cushion. It's absolutely gorgeous and with the, the bundles that we've put together you're actually going to be able to make two 18 inch square flying geese ombre cushions but I must say let me have a bit of a flick through because you will need the book. The bundles are separate to the book. It's only £12.99 which um, yeah, it's lower than the RRP, RRP. It's supposed to be $14.99. And let me show you some of my faves in here. It's a beautiful book. I know our producer, Hannah, it's her favourite book. She begged and pleaded Paul to be able to get this in for us. Um, as she saw it on Instagram and she just loves it. Talks through all your essentials, your different bits and bobs. It talks you through extra tools um, that, that, uh, that you can use throughout. Bear in mind, you're getting 14 projects. But what I love about books like this is that you're going to be able to take uh, tapes, take sort of uh, techniques and make even more designs out of it. There's your binding and then let's show you some of the projects because they're absolutely beautiful and I'm thinking even though if, imagine this in like your red and whites or imagine this in uh, more traditional colorways they look beautiful and bold in the, the rainbows but again it will look completely different gorgeous so it isn't just quilts this whole section at the start is all quilts but then you've got cushions talks to you about placement and how to get that lovely uh, stripe of color uh, then you've also got bags at the end these are lovely aren't they the stripes that's so cool and then let me show you my favorite I'm still going there's the ombre compass that's really nice isn't it because you could use still some of your sort of favourite pattern fabrics as well or, or, or as I say the rainbow bundle that we saw in the last one. Then this is my favourite. There you go, that one. I'd love to see that made up. That's so cool, isn't it? It's really contemporary and beautiful colour. Um, aren't, they, aren't they your feet, Joe? Joe's always walking around without his shoes on. This one's cool. This one we call the uh, French Prince of Bel Air. It's like, oh, I love this, the, the fabric choices on this. 80s, 80s vibe. There's your picnic squares quilt. So these are all um, these are all your quilt projects. Then we're into cushions. So cushions to go with as well. This one would look lovely with your batiks, solids, and then your barley pops. Can you imagine? That would look so nice. So it really clearly talks you through, obviously, the cushion that we're doing today. And then further on, that's nice for fussy cutting. If you've got some famous favourite prints, maybe of your Tula or your Tilda charm packs. And then you've also got some purses and bags, mini projects. Just like our bright fabric panel, isn't it? Coasters, little drawstring bags. In one of the heat wave deals, there are um, panels as well, aren't there? The two and a half inch strips. I'll definitely have a look at that if you're getting this book. So it's a beautiful book. It's today £12.99, which reminder is lower than the RRP. It's supposed to be £14.99, uh, but today less than £13. Fantastic value. I urge everybody who hasn't already got it to get that book. You will love it. We've now got two options of Alison Glass. This colourway is beautiful, isn't it? Hang on, let me spin it around. It's that way up, isn't it? You're going to be able to make two full cushions with the back and everything. So two full cushions and then, I mean, let's face it, you're definitely going to have fabric left over, surely. You've got loads of Alison Glass fabric here. Half a metre of your green with this embroidery print. This is so nice. This is called Turtle. It's like Teenage Ninja Newton Turtle, isn't it? Yeah. Have I got that the right way around? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Who is your favourite? Um, Leonardo. Leonardo. Can you name them all? 
<laughs> yeah, he's naming them all. Uh, this one's gorgeous as well. They had little like cross stitch, don't they? Again, your embroidery, you got your pink, your hot pink, hot, hot, hot pink. All of these are half meters, and then you're also getting a meter of white. So half a meter of all of your designer Alison glass prints, and then a meter of white. So um, you've obviously got enough to do all of your background as well. I'm thinking even with two, if you would have, you're still gonna have some left over, aren't you? Because actually the back of this cushion, she's used designer print, that isn't just white. I was thinking, oh, with a meter of white, you're definitely gonna have enough to do more, more. Maybe some of the mini project from the book. You could do some of the coasters. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, there you go. Um, I know Catherine bought in what she didn't use. And bearing in mind, she's she's made up a whole cushion here. She's done all of the front of this one. And, and, and Joe's just bought in all this fabric that she had left over. £39.99. Uh, loads of fabric, four metres in total for less than £40. So we'll see that come into play um, during the demo. And then, again, sticking with Alison Glass, I absolutely love this Sunprint range. It's been very, very popular indeed. This time, it's the lovely sort of blues and purples. That ombre is really lovely, isn't it? So I think this is going to go with a lot of people's decor, isn't it? It's a bit more subtle. It's lovely. Don't get me wrong, though. I do love a rainbow. Absolutely love a rainbow. So you have half a metre of each of your prints, half a metre of this lovely, almost silvery pink, it's beautiful, half a metre, half a metre of your orange, half a metre of your blue, half a metre of your grey, half a metre of this deep bluey purple, it's gorgeous, that goes really, really nicely, it really stands out, and then again a metre of white, a metre of white. Now, Catherine hasn't used any specific, you know, creative grid rulers or anything. She's going to talk you through exactly how you do it, um, cutting it and making it into your flying geese sections. £39.99. Is there anything you want me to mention before we go into the demo, Laura? Check out on the book as soon as you can because that will sell out, I predict, today. If you want it, make the most of it. Um, we've got Catherine up next. So enjoy the next demonstration. Have a, have, have a look on the website as well. If you're, whilst you're watching Catherine, have a browse through the website, check out those heat wave deals, check out any of the bits and bobs that we've got under 10 pounds coming up as well um, at, at 10 o'clock and we're back right after this. Hi there. I'm Catherine Wright from Leicestershire Craft Centre and I'm really excited to be back at Sewing Street today to show you a lovely flying goose cushion project. Now it's from this book, Modern Rainbow Patchwork Quilts, and I absolutely love this book. It was fab. Uh, it's full of really, really nice uh, modern projects. There's quilts in there, there's smaller projects in there like the cushion, and then there's lots of little things as well. So there's absolutely loads to have a go at. And uh, the pictures uh, in it are great because they all use these lovely, lovely rainbow fabrics, um, which is of course so timely at the moment and look fantastic. So, um, this particular project concentrates on flying geese and they're, they're okay to do, they're not too hard, but you can run into some problems. So, I am going to give you quite a few hints and tips today to hopefully get a good result because we've got 18 flying geese in here. So, by the time you've done this cushion, you will be fantastic at them. You will have no trouble at all. So, to start off with, um, on this particular project, um, we're only cutting squares and rectangles. So your cutting isn't too difficult. Just pop the book out of the way there. Um, but I'm just going to go through what you need to do with your white fabric so that you have enough to do um, all 18 rectangles. And I believe there's enough in the project packs to do two cushions. But if you cut it out in the right way, you will get enough. If you cut it the other way, you might not, I discovered. So when you cut, uh, get your fabric out, I cut all mine in pairs. So I kept my fabric folded and ironed it to get it um, all nice and flat. Trimmed off the salvage. And then if I just move those out of the way, I can quickly show you. In order to get enough square, uh, enough rectangles, you need to cut the narrow way parallel to the salvage. Um, your rectangles are three and a half inches by six and a half inches. So the three and a half strips that you cut 
need to be along the top of your folded fabric parallel to the salvage. When I did it, I did six and a half inches that way and then you end up not having quite enough. So if you do it the other way, you will fit everything in no problem at all. So I'll do a very quick, just to show you, so you know exactly what I mean. So I'm just gonna trim the salvage off. I'm doing this quickly so it will not be quite as gorgeously accurate as when I did the real thing because you do need to take your time cutting these flying geese out. Accuracy is absolutely key to getting a good flying goose and getting everything to match up. So you're gonna look three and a half along the top, like so. Remember, always cut away from you. And if like that, it didn't go through straight away, go again, rather than sawing it. I've been using this rotary quilter, quilter on my, rotary cutter on my wadding and that blunts it and it really needs a new blade. So you've cut your three and a half downwards and then you can cut your six and a half across and you will get everything you need out of it if you do it that way. So one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. Uh, so they're nice easy numbers to remember, three and a half by six and a half. Three, four, five, six, I always double check like that though because it's really easy to get it wrong. I cut it out the first time. I managed to count five and a half. It's ever so easy to do. Okay. So you can see out of a strip, you can get six with only a tiny bit left over. If you do it the other way, you've got a lot more wastage. So that's the way to cut your white rectangles. All your colored squares, they're just three and a half, um, three and a half inch square. So ever so straightforward and you need six per colour. And then I found in order to get it so that I didn't get muddled up and kept my colours nice, I got them all arranged beautifully like this because you're going to put them together in pairs uh, to make your flying geese. Now I've actually done the first two rows because we haven't got time for me to make the whole cushion all in one go and you'd get pretty bored watching me do 18 flying geese. So I have done already the red and yellow chevrons and the greedy ones. So I'm going to show you how to do the blue and purple. I'm going to show you how to put them in the column and attach it all together. So we'll put that to one side for the moment. Okay, so here are my blue and purples already. Now you need to mark up your three and a half inch squares. And you need to do this really carefully because the line that you draw on your squares is where you are going to sew. And it's all about lining it up really, really carefully to get everything matching. Now, there are many, many things you can use to draw on your fabric and you can use whatever you like. I have come to the, I've tried ever so many different things and I've decided I really like a little mechanical pencil. It's got a really fine point. I nicked this out of the kids, um, pencil case um, and it shows up on all the different fabrics because you have this problem if you use um, certain colours it shows up on light fabrics but it doesn't show up on dark fabrics and then white pencils aren't always that great and um, you could use a, an erasable one but sometimes you have if you do that you have to work really fast because it's gone by the time you get ready to sew so I'm using a nice little sharp mechanical pencil and I get them all marked up at once. So you can have a little factory sort of thing going. Now your cutting board is really useful to help you do this because what you're going to draw on is a diagonal line. You might be able to see them on there already. So you can line up on your board where you've got that 45 degree line and along the edge of your ruler, you're going to draw a line from point to point. Now it actually doesn't matter if you draw it that way or that way because you can rotate your squares. Because this fabric is lovely and it's not got a directional pattern, it doesn't matter which way round your squares go. So you can draw them on all the same way and it's still going to come out looking really nicely because you're not going to get designs upside down or anything like that. There's my blue one, just a couple more to do. So, 
you can see that you just need to really just take the time to absolutely get that line from point to point. When you do half square triangles, obviously you draw this line and then you sew either side of it. But with flying geese, we are actually going to sew on that line. So accuracy is key. Um, there are different ways to make flying geese. And the book is great because it gives you two methods. It gives you this um, one step method and then it gives you a quick method. But this particular cushion uses the one step method. So that's what we're doing today. You'll see some ways use triangles, all sorts of different ways. So we've got them marked up. And the first square, you're going to line up really carefully the corners and the edge. And as my pins, I usually put a pin either side to hold it in place because you absolutely don't want this to move. Okay, and then we're going to stitch down from the bottom corner up to the inside. Uh, now you just need a standard foot on your machine for this. And if you can, if your machine's got a nice way that you can line it up absolutely spot in the center and see that central bit through your, through your machine foot, then that's brilliant because you can see where you're going. So we're going to follow that line really straight right off the end. Okay. Now, hopefully, when we have a look at this, we will see that the points are coming down nicely and it's going to overlap slightly at the top. We'll give it a good old press. Your iron is absolutely your friend in this project. I haven't hit the corner absolutely perfectly, but we shall keep going. If you'll weigh out and do it and have another go. You have to remember I'm saying standing up, which I wouldn't normally do. Okay, now it's really important that when you do the second one on the other side, it overlaps. It should overlap. That is right. Okay. Very nice and carefully pin it. Now, it's, it seems a little bit like you want to start here, but I'd say don't start there, start down here, because if things move, it, it, it's all going in the same direction and it just works better. We will press that one. Now, I'm going to maybe be a little bit controversial here um, because in the book and on lots of things, they um, suggest that you cut this excess away. And you can do that. And I did this on my example here. However, when I cut it away, I suddenly found that it was harder when you start joining them all together it was harder to keep everything straight. Things started to curve a little bit because when you've cut things away, you've got more seams and things start to stretch a bit. So on this one, I've tried a different method and I'm actually going to leave the excess there. Partly because you can see your seam lines and you can see your point much better than on this one. Because when you join them together, you absolutely have to hit this point so that we get lovely, lovely points at the edge of your flying geese. So I'm going to leave them there. It kind of helps it, helps it keep stronger. But if you wish to cut it away like on this, because that's what you're used to doing, then that is absolutely fine. Um, there are pros and cons to both. Um, if when you do put these together, obviously it's a little bit more bulky because you've got a lot of fabric, but I just found it was a bit more stable. So, you know, that's your, that's your choice. Now, when you've done your flying geese, goose, you will see that you have some extra here at the top and you should have. It should be a quarter of an inch. I'm not sure that one is, to be honest. I've got a little ruler to check. So I did check all mine. I would... Uh, it is actually, so it is worth checking. 
Here's one of my ones that I did when I was practicing and you can see it's gone really wrong. I had to ditch that one. If you've got ones where it comes out like that, don't carry on because it's not going to work. When you join those points together, you need that quarter of an inch. Okay. Right, so we're going to just do a little bit of a little bit of a, a factory to zoom together the other ones. And I'm going to pin them together all at once. And it, you know, if you find that one of them looks a bit awkward or doesn't look quite right when you've sewn it, your unpicker is your friend. And you can have another go because practice makes perfect. That's what we know. What I did like about this was the two different project packs that we had. So this one that I made up in the different colours, in the greys and the blues, I thought was really, just really nice and elegant. Um, and you could get this ombre effect going on from light to dark, which I really liked. I'll show you the back of it as well. So I really liked the purple, so I kept that as my binding because that was my favourite colour. Okay. What do we got? We've got one there, two, three, four. So we're going to do six of each. I'm expecting that you'll spend really quite a lot longer just lining them up and pinning. There we go. Uh, so if you're feeling confident, when you've got a whole little bunch pinned together, you can chain piece them. So if you're chain piecing, go through and then stop, let your, let your thread run on a little bit and then you can pop the next one in and do that and you'll see they're coming out the end all joined together and then you can stop, snip them apart and if you do quite a few at a time you'll get your eye in so you'll get yourself nice and accurate on them all because you'll be looking for that particular point. Oh, that one doesn't like it either. Right, we'll snip those ones apart. Obviously, you've got scissors on your machine. They're very nice because they uh, give you nice little short bits as well. That's better. Right. So we've got five nice ones on that side. I'm looking for my little ironing pad and it's got under my cushion. <laughs> so just uh, quickly move it over because else I'm going, going to uh, melt my cutting board, which would not be a good thing. But if you do, a few, if you do it like this and you do a few at a time, then it's, it's quite a quick project then actually, because you've got like a little, little sort of chain going on. And absolutely, when you press them, really press them nice and flat, get that seam, right open and they're looking not too bad at all nice and square okay right so now we're going to just quickly attach the purple to the other side so the same process and again, making sure they line up really nicely. So. I've got so many squares here, I'm getting them all muddled up. But that's what's really uh, nice about this, because you can make a pair. 
you've got enough fabric in your packs to make two lovely cushions. I'm probably a bit left over to try some of the other little projects too. Um, when you've cut, um, a tip that I do need to say actually about the cutting out is when you're cutting, you can choose one of the coloured fabrics to cut for your backing and then you need a coloured fabric for your binding. And I, your binding needs to be 13 and a half inches by 18 and a half inches. So I would recommend just cutting that binding off your fabric first. Because then you know you've got it, you know it's the right length and it's not, you're not going to have to join anything. But it is only two strips just for binding the back edges of the cushion. Okay, so we've got those ones pinned. So remember we're going to go down from that bottom corner to the top. So on a flying goose, the white part is your goose and the smaller coloured triangles are the sky. That's where they get their name and you often get, get them in rows or in groups. I suppose like migrating geese. That must be where it comes from. And the last one. Okay, so you can see it didn't really take too long to put those together. I probably whizzed them a bit quicker than I might have done if I was just at home, just me really being really careful. And we're going to do another press and see if we've got those nice quarter inches at the top. quickly whiz back my ironing board. I've recently invested in one of those little tabletop ironing boards and they are so useful for doing your patchwork because you can just have them set up next to your sewing machine and then uh, you can you know quickly get your blocks pressed as you go along without having to like leap up go somewhere else Sometimes you have your ironing board set up in a different room. No, you should always have it near your sewing machine. And then you're sorted. So they're not looking too bad, considering. Okay. We've got a nice seam at the top of each. A nice quarter inch at the top there, so that they should hopefully go together. So this is the nice test a bit now. How we're going to get these together to make a nice row of flying geese. So. We are aiming, when we sew, to hit those points so that we just get the point of the triangle. We don't want to cut it off if we can help it. So again, careful pinning needed. Now for some reason, when I put these together, I always start on this side, lining them up, and then I flip it over to put my pin in. I don't know why, it's just how I do it. But you can check it's all really lined, and then you can see this nice seam and nice um, point you can see where you've got to hit and I tend to put a pin in so that the point of my pin is on that point because then when you're sewing it you can make sure you can kind of see that tip of the pin sometimes you can't see you sewing very well if you've used a really well matching thread but you can see the tip of that pin and you know where you're going to aim for. Okay, and then I'm going to put one either side just to hold it in place. Now, at this point, we need to swap to a quarter inch foot because we're going to sew it all with a quarter inch seam. So we'll pop that on the machine. Okay. Now when I've joined, joined these together on the other ones, let me just snip off those little threads so they don't catch. 
um, I put the put my flying geese together in pairs rather than keeping attaching one at a time into a long row. If you keep if you attach them all in a long row, every time you put one on, if you sew it from the same direction, you start to get a little bend in them, you start to get a little wobble. So if you do it in pairs, that seems to stop that happening a little bit. Okay, not too bad, possibly a touch close, but we'll live with it today. Okay, so there's the first pair. Let's have another go on this one. This way, where you don't um, cut off the excess, also, if you find you have gone a little bit out, there's a very sly little bit of blue just showing there, um, which means if you haven't cut the excess away, I could potentially sew that not very straight because I'd be following the blue edge, not my white edge. Whereas if you leave it behind, I can follow the white edge with my quarter inch and I'll know I'll be, I'll be nice and straight. Okay, line up my pin to help me. And those to hold on. And again, you can get a whole load pinned at once and just keep going. That's a nice one. And our last pair. Or you can do a row, do a colour and then come back and do a bit more, depending how you're feeling. That pin in straight. And the same. Okay. We go again on our quarter inch. I did find when I trimmed the uh, excess away, sometimes my machine wanted to get a little bit stuck on the seams as well, and it tended to either skip over it sometimes or it wanted to wobble off when it hit those seams. So I do find that doesn't happen as much if you leave that, that excess behind. But then when you, you'll see when we come to just put the columns together, you have got more that you're working with. So you've got to decide which works best for you. Okay, now when you put those pairs together, you will see that at the sides here, we now have some of the coloured fabric. And again, that's right. You should have a quarter of an inch on these side bits as well. Because then the bit that you're going to join it to also has a quarter inch and then you'll find that you get those lovely white triangles. It's really important on this project because the white really stands out. So if you don't get it quite right, you will notice it. So it's a, it's a great project for getting really accurate and, and practicing those points and accuracy in your patchwork. That's for certain. Okay, so we're now, they're all nicely pressed. I'm happy I've got my quarter inches on the sides because if you haven't, again, undo it, have another go because else you're really going to run into problems when we construct the whole cushion. Uh, and we're going to just put those together into one long strip now. Again, lining up that triangle. So I would say when you're doing this, just keep checking as you go along. Um, you know, does that bit look right? Does, does, have I got my, my quarter inch? Because if you skip, skip on one bit on one stage and think, oh, it'll be all right, I'll sort it out later on. I can tell you it won't be. <laughs> you'll, you'll, you know, by the end, you'll be cross because it won't have come out how you want it to. It's uh, one of those where you've just got to be really careful at every stage and really precise at every stage. And then it'll be successful. 
There's something very nice about rainbow colours. They really appeal to us. Perhaps it's because it's something we see in nature, I don't know. Lovely. OK, so we have a nice column, hopefully, of flying geese. OK, let's give it a lovely press. I have got quarter inches on the side, so I'm happy with that. I feel OK about putting it all together with my other one. And how nice is that going to look? It's going to look fabulous, isn't it? I do like a rainbow. It really works. OK, so when we get to this part, you can see we've got quite a lot of seams to join up and get right. So again, right sides together. Now, I have pressed all my seams in the same direction because somehow on flying geese, they want to go in that direction. But when you come to pin them, <clears throat> you want to push one of those seams down so they nestle together because else you're going to have absolutely loads of layers to go through. So how I tackled it was I made sure I'd lined my seam up and then I pushed one the other way so that they would nest together a little bit more. So you can press them the other way if you want to. I just found they didn't really want to do it. But if I show you the back of this one that I have already joined together, you'll see I've pushed to one side and it's, it's okay, it worked all right. Okay, so let's get that one in place. So if you're fairly, if you're fairly new to um, patchwork and you're, you know, struggling to get some of those quarter inches right, you can always, when you've got things pinned, you can always draw yourself a little guideline to follow um, if that's something that will help you. I mean, I do think the quarter inch feet help if you've got one with a nice guide on, but if you haven't, you know, think about just drawing yourself a, li a little guideline and that will help you keep nice and straight. There's lots of little things you can do just to make it successful. And when I, I teach classes at my craft centre, I always say to people, it doesn't matter if you, you know, want to tack things or want to draw lines, if that's what helps you, get it right until you feel confident enough to do it without then that's absolutely fine okay so I've I've carefully matched those seams and we shall give that a go actually I've got a tiny little bit of excess on this one and I will show you you can ease this in a little bit like you do in dressmaking so you can if you find you've got one that's just a little bit smaller and it will be tiny millimeters less than millimeters really OK, just divide any excess up along the section and you'll find when you sew it, it comes out OK. It's, there are wonders that you can do with easing and with ironing to make things fit. They are your friends. OK, let's give this a go down the edge. So it's a quarter inch seam all the way down. You can see it's finding it a little bit um bulky over those bits but not too bad it's managing it oh, it doesn't like that pin let's move that one there we go right oh the moment of truth shall we see if i've managed it <laughs> do you know what it's always a lottery i wouldn't like to say Oh, on that. Not brilliant on that one, but not bad on the others. <laughs> but I do think it's an absolutely fantastic rainbow design. It really, just really pops, doesn't it? Really pops. Okay, so when you have tackled all those lovely flying geese and got them together and you think to yourself well I don't, I'm not sure I'm ever going to do a flying geese, geese again I've had enough of them we're going to put this cushion all together and I will show you the stages for that um, so nice little bit of wadding 
doesn't have to be anything particularly thick or anything particularly special. This is just a basic cotton wadding. And it suggests in the book that you can add a backing of other fabric or calico if you want to, but I don't really think it's necessary to be honest, because again, you're making it very um, thick if you do. Okay, so line that all out and you're going to get it lovely and flat, tack it round, and I'm not going to show you how to quilt this one today. Um, the book suggests, and I did it on this one, uh, a chevron design to highlight the flying geese. And to do that, I started on one edge and went horizontally across in zigzags like that. Um, and actually, I think that's probably about enough. I don't think you need too much quilting because really it's the design and the fabric that's speaking for itself. But obviously, you know, if you fancy doing more, you can do more. So you get that all beautifully pinned and flat and quilted. And then you're going to do the same for the backs of your cushions. Um, so here are my two backs. I chose the turquoise. I thought it was such a nice colour. And this one I have already quilted. Don't know if you can see that. Um, I did use a slightly uh, lighter colour just so, so that you could. Um, again, you can use anything that you like, but in the book she suggests just a straightforward straight stitch. I think it's, it's more about the um, patterns and the fabric in this book than the quilting, but there's nothing to stop you experimenting with different things. Um, and I'm going to just show you a good way of marking up your back, ready to quilt it. Um, now, because they're not particularly big pieces, you can see that I have just tacked it round the edge rather than all over if it was a big quilt. Um, obviously, if you prefer to use adhesive, you can, that's fine. But I, I really like tacking because, because you get to do this lovely, lovely, satisfying thing at the end where you pull it right out like that. And I just really like doing that. So, <laughs> so I always tack. <laughs> There's something really fun about doing that at the end. Okay, so if you have your back and you line it up nicely on your cutting board again, on my big ruler, and again, I'm going to use a pencil. There are lots of ways of marking, but a light pencil mark, I find, is as good as anything. Um, you can rub it out with a fabric eraser and that works absolutely fine. And so to get your lines nice and straight, you can use your cutting board, start in the middle and a nice, a nice little pencil line, which is light enough that, you know, it's not really heavy on your fabric, but dark enough that you can see to sew. Now on the other piece, I did two inch lines like that. So you can just use these lines on your cutting board just to do it up. I thought that was quite a nifty way and you didn't have to start doing loads of pencil marks on your thing. So mark it all up like that. When I sewed this one, I started in the centre and worked outwards. Then if you have got any bubbling or ruckling, it's going to move it out to the edge. But as I say, because they're not very big, that doesn't tend to happen. Okay, right, when you've got to this point, you've got it nicely quilted, and this is what sent my rotary cutter all blunt. You're going to just line up and take those edges of the wadding off. Now, the reason you've got your wadding a little bit bigger than your uh, backing fabric is because when you quilt it, it can take it in a little. And you could find then suddenly that your quilting isn't, uh, your, your wadding isn't big enough and it's not going to the edge. So, now you will notice that I'm turning my board round so that I am always going away from me. Because that is the nice safest way to do it. Last one, so suddenly that looks really nice and neat and tidy. And so you're gonna have two like that. 
and I'm going to show you just how to put the binding part on the one edge so that as on as on the example you've got nice neat finished edges on your on the back of your cushion so it's an envelope back cushion which is a lovely straightforward way of making a cushion we don't have to worry about zips and things you can still take your cushion pad out to wash if you want to I need my ironing board for this bit again so we're going to make a little binding so this is your strip that you cut right at the start it's uh, 13 and a half by 18 and a half and you're going to use your iron to turn in the edges and turn it into like a strip of bias binding. You might have a bias binding Mako and then you could use that. But to be fair, it's not a huge piece. So just to iron along the top and the bottom works really well. I'm going to fold them in like that and go along. And in half again. Okay, so you've got a beautiful neat piece of binding there to pin on to the edge of your backing. Oh, I like that colour combination. That's really nice. Turquoise. It's a little bit Wimbledon actually, isn't it? A little bit Wimbledon, but I like it. Okay, so if you just make sure the edge of that quilt uh, backing is tucked right inside Okay, and you can pin it in. Now you can see mine's a little bit bigger, but that's cool because we can just snip it off at the edge. It's better than having it too short. <clears throat> I'll just say, so and then you're going to we'll swap feet again. We're going to top stitch that down. Okay. So nice and close to the edge and hopefully if you've pinned it nice and carefully you will catch both sides. Oh I've done that annoying thing where you put your pins in the wrong way around. You can see we've got a nice binding there, nice neat edge. We can snip that like so. And then I'll just talk you through how you put your cushion together very, very quickly. Um, and just in case you've not done an envelope back before. Doesn't want to stay standing up. Okay, so you'll have your beautifully quilted flying geese front and then face down your first back nicely edged and then we'll pretend that this one's all been done as well Put that one on the inside so you see so nice quilted and edged second one like that pin all round and you're going to sew round the whole thing this is your gap to turn it round so don't worry, you're sewing the all four sides. Now remember, these are your flying geese and on those edges as well, it's a quarter inch seam. Yeah, it's be quite easy to kind of go, oh, it's just a cushion I'm putting together and do too big a seam, but you want to keep it at a quarter inch so that we get the edges of the flying geese too. And then when you've done that, you can turn it all around and give it a press. And depending what color you choose, you have a really, really lovely flying geese cushion and enough fabric in your pack to make a matching one as well. And then this lovely, lovely book, which I have to say I am keeping as well <laughs> because it's got so many nice projects in to have a go at. And perfect, a project well done.
Thank you, Catherine. Thank you so much. I'm so pleased that we've finally done a project from this book because as Catherine just said, I'm not surprised she's keeping this one. It's absolutely gorgeous. There are so many projects. Um, not only do you have cushions in there, you've got some really gorgeous big quilts. Uh, my favorite quilt is this one. Hang on, that one. Isn't that amazing? I really want somebody to make this one up. Um, we've also got uh, mini, I say mini makes. You've got some really lovely projects in here, like, let me find them. Um, Keep going, look, little purses, there's coasters. Nice little gift ideas, aren't they? And good chance to practice your binding as well on smaller projects like this. So those of you that are brand new and starting out, there's still projects for you in here also, even if you don't want to do one of the big, big quilts. Lots of great transferable skills as well, learning to draw strings and how to construct bags. So what a great book. Whether you're using your rainbow panels, your rainbow fabrics, some of your favorite toolers maybe, maybe your barley hop, your barley pops, uh, batiks. There's so many opportunities to really get raiding your stash, some of the smaller, even just small scraps that you've got left over, making big quilts, that's a 51 inch square quilt for £12.99. It should be £14.99, the RRP on the back says £14.99. Loads of you have checked out on this, I'm so pleased that you love it still, that every single time that we bring this to air, it's always extremely, extremely popular, so do make the most of it whilst you can, it's a modern rainbow patchwork quilts book, £12.99. Also, the, pardon, sorry, the rainbow one. Rainbow option one, which is this one. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? And what I really like is with the Alison glass is that even if you're not particularly fussy cutting it, there's so many different elements that you are still sort of catching glimpses of all of the lovely prints. So here we've got, let me space these out a bit for Joe. We've got all of these half meters. It's four half meters, uh, four whole meters, sorry, of uh, Alison glass and then also a meter, you've got your meter of uh, cream or white, white. Half a meter of green, half a meter of your cross stitchy green. You've then got blue, pink, half a meter, half a meter of purple, half a meter of your yellow, and then a meter of your white, all for 39 pounds and 99 pence. Saving eight pounds on this bundle. That is a great saving today, saving eight pounds. Remember, if you bought the book, you're only paying one postage and packaging. No matter how much you buy today, only one P and P, even if you check out multiple times or you buy something later on on the web shop, you're only gonna be paying one P and P. That's the lovely, lovely rainbow option. Those of you that have taken advantage of the heat wave deals, as so many of you have on the website today, then uh, you're automatically eligible as well for the, the one PMP all day. So make the most of anything you see on, on air or on the web shop. Then this one has been extremely popular. Uh, it's actually overtaken the rainbow, which is interesting. I absolutely love, sometimes it's nice to have, um, yeah, we haven't got the, there are oranges isn't in this one, is it? So, it's not in the made up one, I mean, but I mean, so then, I mean, she's still got a whole half meter of that. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six Alison glass fabrics, and then this one. Is that correct? One meter, two meters, three meters, four meters. What do you get instead of the orange? What do you get instead? One meter, two meter three meter, three and a half meters that would be. 39 pounds and 99 pence. Oh, sorry about that. Saving of eight pounds. You also get, by the way, a lighter gray, another light gray. I'm just looking to see whether I can see. Is it the embroidery one? That one. It's that one we're missing, isn't it? That one we're missing. So you get the grey with all of the prints on as well. Sorry about that one. Um, I don't know where that orange one came from. £39.99 with a saving of £8. Less than £40 for all of that designer fabric is fantastic. And you will get another half metre, obviously, of the, the other grey. OK. Right, if you are making... Uh, I want to do a whole show talking about waddings, basically, because quite often we talk about polyester wadding or cotton wadding, and it's all dependent on what, what project you want and what sort of sort of 
finish you want. What I love about this, this is polyester, so this is great for if you're wanting to quilt any cushions, if you're wanting to do any wall hangings, any of the mini projects in there, if you want to give your bag a bit of body um, and quilt it, then this is gonna be ideal for that. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily use it for your big quilts, uh, if you're going to drape it over the bed, you might want a cocktail one that's slightly warmer. Not in this weather, it's nice though, isn't it, to have a, a lighter weight, lighter weight quilt or cushion. Just £8.99 and it is 45 inches by 60. So this would be enough for both cushions. You're going to get loads in there. It's 45 by 60 inches, so you'll have plenty left over as well. £8.99. And don't throw that away, because coming up in the last hour, we've actually got the, uh, the, the tape that you can actually use to fuse waddings together. So I'll talk about that in the last hour. But, um, yeah, your polyester wadding is always ideal to have in your stash, and it's really affordable. £8.99. Just be aware that it is 100% polyester. It is your crib size, so that's plenty, more than enough to do your two cushions. You can even do, I mean, you can see that Catherine's done some lovely, just sort of stitches echoing your, your flying geese, but imagine using like a contrasting thread or maybe the Aurifil variegated new tulip threads would look lovely. You could even do some free motion, or I mean, quilt it as you want, um, but just giving it that option would look amazing, wouldn't it, with a, a contrasting thread as well. Okay, that's £8.99. We have got everything under £10 in the last hour. So are you ready? You've got to have us on speed dial or get us ready on the web. It's going to be busy, busy, busy. We'll see you right after this. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring your question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harborough. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I also just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have a seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, so uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say don't get disheartened, take your um, learning journey slowly, don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt, build up your skills, um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have.
Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Good morning, good morning. Hope you're having a lovely morning. What are we up to? Hopefully all around the country. We've got gorgeous weather. Uh, it's a bit too warm though, isn't it? Sitting out too much. You've got to be ever so careful. So stay with us for this next hour. We've got so much to bring you all under 10 pounds. Are you ready? Because it's going to be quite fast and furious. As you can see, we've got a lot, a lot to get into this last hour. So shall we start? With our Debbie's book, so proud, of course, of Debbie Shaw. She is uh, the absolute queen when it comes to bag making books. What I love about this book is it's something that I've not seen from any quilting book before, actually. It's dedicated to all things quilting. So it's £9.99. It's squeezed into our under £10 show. It's signed from Debbie as well. And it will give you all of the best top tips. <laughs> for successful sewing. There you go, she signed it. So I'll oh, Debbie Shaw, we're very, very lucky to be able to have um, obviously Debbie on board as one of our presenters and she has, a, 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 well, she's a big part of our family, isn't she? So it tells you about Debbie and then about quilting. Uh, what is patchwork, any quick tips? And those of you that watch Debbie on the show, you'll know that Number one, she's a fantastic teacher and extremely knowledgeable. She's taught me so, so much. But she also doesn't use jargon. She doesn't use uh, abbreviations. She's very, very clear. And I remember, I remember when I first started in the sewing world and I just felt like it, it was like a foreign language. There were so many words that I didn't understand, I didn't know. And the great thing about Debbie, for, from a beginner's point of view, is that she breaks everything down so well and so clearly without abbreviations or jargon. Talking about your sewing machine and what to look for when you're purchasing a new sewing machine and really dissecting all of the different machine feet. Quite often you buy a machine and it will come with lots of different feet and you might not even dare to use any of them when things go wrong it's such an amazing book I know that we have sold this book in the hundred I should say thousands really now there's so many of you that have taken advantage of this so not only does it go through all of the different oh I'm going to keep this out actually because we're going to be talking about lots of these throughout the show um, but also picking your fabrics, talking about different waddings. This is exactly what I was saying with the polyester, talking about why you would use polyester, why you would use polycotton, or why you'd use a fusible fleece or a bamboo silk cotton. It's brilliant. I've never ever seen a book like this that's dedicated to all things quilting. Cutting, machine stitches, zigzag stitches, applique, mock hand stitches, uh, reverse appliques, inspiration, your quilt sandwich. Quilt as you go. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Free motion as well. Straight back. I mean, we haven't even got to the project yet. There we go. So all of this first section you can see is a book in itself. I mean, that surely should cost £10 to learn all of those techniques. And then your projects. It tells you what techniques you're going to learn. It tells you the finished size. It tells you your ingredients, the things that you'll need, uh, any notes, and then step-by-step -step instructions with photographs as well. We all know Debbie's uh, husband actually is a photographer. And so as she's making, he'll take the photos alongside it, which really helps that you've got those step-by-step, -step, very, very clear, precise photographs. This is lovely. Trapunto, giving that lovely sort of lofty finish. Trapunto stocking, adding borders, table runner. There's so many lovely projects. Tote bags, of course, we're going to have a bag in there. Bunting quilt, pillowcases. 
Oh, I mean, I, I would spend the whole hour talking about this if I could. There's so many amazing techniques and gorgeous projects in there. At £9.99, of course, it had to be first on our list to bring you in our under £10 show. Love it, love it, love it. We love Debbie. Absolutely love that. Should we do another one of Debbie's books? Uh, it is the brilliant bags, 12 different beautiful bags, and they're all ever so stylish, I must say. So you've got easy to follow instructions, very, very clear step-by-step -step photography, and all the techniques that you're going to need are listed as well. You've got a big beach bag, you've got overnight bags, you've got, I know that Debbie said, I'm kind of like uh, shooting myself in the foot here, where I'm telling you how to design your own bags. I'm putting myself out of business. Um, but no, you can, absolutely start to create what's important to you with a bag so customizing projects these are all your sort of techniques at the start before we go into all of your projects toolkit there's your beach bag city bag uh, is this the one with the duffel bag as well you've got an office bag there I don't know whether this is the one that you've got the big um, overnight bag oil cloth tote which is lovely when we can start, you know, going to our farmer's markets would be lovely. You can uh, fussy cutting as well, pleating and, and adding a, a motif. Your shopper bag. You've also got three pocket bag, twist bag. See, these are all really different as well, aren't they? It's not just your ordinary, oh, 12 different tote bags. You've got some really cool techniques that are then transferable using H640, we'll come to that soon actually. This is a lovely technique. This is a really lovely technique. It's called your smock drawstring pouch. It's really nice. Um, your quilted drawstring tote. There's loads of bags, all 12 projects for just £9.99. Just makes it, well, pence a project. Very, very nice indeed. Lots of people checking out on that. Let's do it because H640 is mentioned a lot H640 is mentioned a lot. It's a fusible fleece. You always will see Debbie using this when she's doing her demos. Um, and quite often, in fact, let me look at the start of this one and it will, it will talk about it. Um, but basically, it's like a fluffy side on the one. And then on the other side, it's got lots of uh, little glue dots, which, sorry, bear with me. I'm just having a look because I know that she mentions it in this book. Um, it is a fantastic fusible fleece to have in your stash. Whenever we get it in, we literally sell, um, it, it, it goes by the hundreds again. Oh, I'm not sure where it is, let me show you. Why are you laughing at me, Joe? Ugh. He does like a horrible little, huh? you couldn't find it, could you? <laughs> it's cut into a meter square. It is cut into a meter square, but it will just give your bag a lovely uh, sort of, structure to it so if you're using especially if you're using like one of the poplin weights i'd absolutely recommend using a fusible fleece on it um just nine pounds 99 for your meter square it's h640 you'll probably always hear us talking about this one but we're and it's always going to be on reorder we'll do everything that we can to to keep trying to get it back if it goes out of stock but it's definitely worth stocking up whilst you can okay so that's your h640 I found it. Choose a fusible fleece that has uh, that is ironed onto the back of your fabric. It will give it your it will give it more form and stability. You can find sewing ones, but these are really easy to just simply press with an iron. Put a pressing cloth on, or sew fabric side up, um, or, or iron fabric size up. And all of the instructions. It is an official Visaline product, but all of your sort of heating and washing instructions are on the side. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I had no idea we had this in stock. You know how much I mentioned this box because I think it's fantastic. I saw it on the Sewing Street fan page and uh, it just was so satisfying to see you organizing all of your skeins and all of your threads. So during lockdown, I think we've all been doing it, haven't we? We've all been getting a bit more organized. I've got to the point that everything that I organized at the start of it needs organizing again. But you've got in here, um, let me open it. 10 DMC quality skeins. It's going to be randomly selected colour. Um, 
They're absolutely gorgeous colours, aren't they? But as I say, you're going to get a random selection of colours. Um, they're beautiful, beautiful quality. So you're definitely going to get 10 skeins. And then you get 100 of these bobbins. So you can wind up all of your skeins, all of your colours, so that they're lovely and organised. How nice would that be in rainbow order? Yeah. 100 of these little bobbins to wind up. They're all ready. They're all ready to go. They would look lovely, wouldn't they? And it's just, I just think it's great to just have them organised because how much money will you save? If you have all these in a drawer or in a bag and you're like, oh, I haven't got the, haven't got the colours I need, but actually you have. You just can't find them. I'm always always doing that. So, and I mean, you'd pay that surely just for the box to be able to get your DMC skeins as well. It's fantastic. That looks beautiful. Doesn't that look beautiful as well? All rainbow order. And you've got space here then for your little scissors and everything. Oh yeah, whenever we get this in, it's always extremely popular. Price point is fantastic. Okay. Yeah, somebody sent in a photograph, didn't they? We saw it on the fan page, all organised. It was so satisfying seeing them all in colour order. So that's your thread organiser box. Now you need thread to fill it, don't you? We've got 10 skeins included, of course, but if you want even more, we've got less than 10 pounds, remember? We've got the variegated rainbow ones and we've also got, which ones do you want? Oh no, is it, we have, we've not got those ones. We've got these ones. These are your bright 36 of your beautiful bright colours. But then you've also got your great neutrals as well. Very, very affordable if you're starting out. I'm thinking if you do toy making, these are going to be great for uh, em embellishing faces. These would be really, really lovely for, for, for doing, even if you're just having a go and practising with a hoop and doing some lovely uh, embroidery or embellishing over some uh, pattern fabrics that you've already got. I love the idea of it. Any, uh, any, uh, pardon, sorry, Joe, what did you say? Oh, there's more colours in the middle. Can you see? It's like you're not, you're not showing them all. There's loads in there. There's three layers of lots of colours. Eight metres of your stranded cotton for £9.99. You get 36 skeins in there. For under ten pounds, fantastic value for money. Really great value. Right. Oh, this is one of my favourites. Uh, I'm awful at threading needles. I don't know why. I just think I'm, I'm so bad at it. If, you, if you're working with uh, doing your hand sewing and you're m working with multiple colours of thread and you want to keep changing them, or even just one colour thread and you want to just make sure before you started your project, maybe as I say, if you're toy, um, toy making, you want to do nice slip stitching on the back of binding or toy making or bag making, slip stitching your lining all nice. And you just want to make sure that they're all threaded, ready to go. Maybe when we're able to go to workshops as well, this would be lovely. I was talking to a lady who works in the theatre and she um, has one of these side stage, ready to do any adjustments. It's so handy. So, what is it, you ask? It is your sewing dome. It can fit 10 threaded needles without tangling them without getting in a mess, without having to keep, uh, you know, you're going to store them lint-free. You can store this away. You can take it on the move with you without prodding yourself all the time. So let me open this up. Are you ready, Joe, for the magic? So you have the little lid for the case at the top. Now, I've already got one in here just to show you how it works. I've pushed that too far, haven't I? <gasps> typical, typical, typical. Right, bear with me. I'm going to have to try and get this out. So... Let me pull it out. Oh, no, I've done it. I knew I'd do that. Right, I might need to do it. I've pulled the thread out of the needle and I've also pushed this too far. I might need a, a spare sewing if we've got another um, needle anywhere. I might need to come back to it if we can get another needle, Joe. <gasps> yeah, good point. Hang on, let me use my pin. Talk amongst yourselves for a second. Oh, I was so excited about showing you this. There we go. So... It's brilliant, but you don't need to push it all the way. This is exactly what I was telling you I do not like doing, is threading the eye of a needle. There we go, I've done it. So, you have your thread. Let's start again. Can you see they're all numbered? Um, 
So you've got number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm not sure whether you can see that. They're all numbered. So if you want to do yourself a bit of a chart and you know that number one is your pink, number two is your uh, grey, number three is your... So if you're, yeah, if you're even threading up all of your cross stitch, you can do all your cross stitch, all your different numbers, different colours, you can have them all ready to go. So you've got your threaded uh, needle ready to, to sew. If you want to put it back, hands, uh, if you are thinking right, a little paws or hands that are in the way instead of prodding them into your side of your armchair, your sofa armchair, we've all done it, poke it in. You don't need to push it all the way, that's what I did wrong. And then, you see that little shark's fin? You just wrap it around there and start spinning it and you'll hear this very satisfying click. Wind it up and that will sit there and you can do 10 threads, keep going with all 10 of these, and they will not get tangled. They will not get tangled. If by chance you find it does, which it, it, it just won't, uh, you do have a little, uh, a little like screw at the top there. You can open that and, and take it all apart. Uh, but you, won't, you shouldn't need to do that. It's just £9.99 and it's one of my favourite little gadgets. It's so good to take on the move, isn't it? Now, ready to go. You're going to sit in the park and do some uh, some stitching. You've got 10 threaded needles all ready to go. Love that. Um, I, I, it's the first time that I've seen it on air that I've been able to get it out as well and, and talk about it. So I love that. Less than 10 pounds. Should we do some new fabric? These are bundles that have literally just been put together as well. I've not seen these two fabrics. Are they brand new to us? Brand new, brand new bundles. Right, the fabrics might have been on before, but the bundles are brand new. And this is so cool. Look, your Union Jacks with your hearts. Lewis and Irene, Union Jack hearts. One metre, so half a metre of your Union Jacks and then half a metre of your blue for £8.99. Isn't that gorgeous? They look really nice together. Again, I'm thinking for bag making, cushions. Soft furnishings, little storage boxes. It's quite unisex as well, isn't it? Let me open this out. So half a metre of this, £8.99, and half a metre of that lovely blue. It's like a Copen blue, isn't it? Designer, beautiful fabric for less than £9. First time I've seen this Lewis and Irene fabric. Gorgeous. The great thing about bundling it as well, us bundling it, is that we know colour works really well. I wouldn't know what blue to put with that because we've got lots of different solid blues on the website, but I wouldn't know which one. Should we do the vegetables? Right, I absolutely want to do one of uh, Debbie Shaw's brilliant bags with this, like a farmer's market tote bag to go and get your fruit and veg. £7.99, that is absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? That's so cool. I've really gotten into, um, well, I say I've really gotten into, I haven't been doing any homegrown uh, vegetables, but I love looking at them all on, um, I love looking at everyone's vegetable patches on the internet. <laughs> Got really into it. <laughs> Just £7.99. I didn't realise um, that, what, what vegetable was it that I saw the other day? Um, that are really long shoots. I don't know whether they're runner beans. These are lovely, aren't they? Look, you've got your carrots, you've got your beetroot, your aubergine, your hens and the eggs. Oh, that's so nice. I'd like to make like a fruit bowl with this. Do you know what I mean? That you keep all of your potatoes or something in, tomatoes, your carrots, are they leeks? Peas in the pod. Just £7.99. Oh yes, oh my word, I have seen that. You know on TikTok or on, is it on Facebook or something? It's on everything. You can go in and, and trick somebody by saying, oh my word, I've got a leak under my sink. And they're rushing in, they're rushing in to try and fix this leak and they're like, where is it, where is it? And there's just literally a leak under the sink. I've seen that. Little things, eh? Make us giggle. You also get, by the way, half a metre of chartreuse, which is the perfect combination of colour. 
Oh, so you could put it with purples, you could put it with all sorts of colours, but I do love it with the chartreuse. That goes very, very well, doesn't it? £7.99. £7.99. It's the first time I've seen this lovely farmer's market fabric. We've also got some of the spot on bundles. Tan one first. Remember, everything this hour is under £10. Do check out your baskets as soon as you can. And you can check out as many times as you want and you'll still only pay one p and How is this under £10? You're getting three fabrics this time. Nice. This is your poplin weight cotton. It's beautiful quality from Rose and Hubble. So I would suggest if you are thinking of making a bag with it, use your H640. It will give it lovely structure. So you've got your spot. You've then also got your two complementary colours, which are beige, half a metre, and brunette, half a metre. That's just having your stash, aren't they? These are really great neutral colours that are going to really, well, they're going to go with everything, aren't they? They'd look nice as well with um, your veg. That's really nice. This one. I'm a, I've got a dress in this print in this colour. You haven't seen me wear it though because I keep trying it on and I think, no, doesn't really fit well after lockdown. Yes, it would fit you. I'll bring it in. I'll bring it in. Just £9.99. Half a metre of your spot, half a metre of beige and half a metre of brunette. Rose and Hubble, it's absolutely gorgeous quality. And as Laura said, it is just perfect for your stash. All under £10, all half meter pre-cuts, just so you know, if you are multi-buying, then uh, it will already come pre-cut, ready to go. That's for linings and backs cushions as well. We've got a navy version too. Whenever we do a blue bundle like this, it's always very, very popular. This is your navy blue, and actually you've still got your other um, sky and royal blue as well. That's a lovely bundle. White on navy spots, all under £10, all under £10. Saving on that one today. To be able to get half a metre even for 4 99 I would say would be good. You're getting half a metre of your navy, half a metre of your royal blue, and half a metre of your sky all for 9.99, amazing. Can I pick one? Can I do the rotary cutter, the pinking rotary uh, blade? So this is a spare blade, it's from Fiskars, but actually you can use this in conjunction with any of your rotary cutters. We've put one of them into the clover rotary cutter so I can show you how it works. But uh, whether it be, you know, if you have, yeah, if you've got a, a cotton fabric like this and uh, uh, it frays, doesn't it? It does just fray. So I know a lot of people use pinking shears to, to, to stop it from fraying, or I really like it as a decorative edge. It looks lovely as a decorative edge as well. Or if you're using it to finish your seams, if you haven't got an overlocker for dressmaking, that is gonna as well help to, to reduce fray on and, and help with any, um, with any fraying. So let me just show you what it looks like. Oh, I'm not pressing. I didn't realise. So I'm not going to, I should really use my ruler, but yeah, I should really use my ruler probably. You can use it with a ruler, but I just wanted to show you. No, it hasn't cut. Maybe I will use my ruler. <laughs> it's probably been used a lot, hasn't it? To be fair, I think this has been used quite a lot. No. Ah, oh! right. So. It does give you, and it will give you, a lovely, lovely pinked edge. Um, it will give you a really nice pinked edge, just like if you were to use your pinking scissors, but it's actually, I think, quite quick. It's a lot quicker than using pinking shears. If you are familiar with using rotary cutter blades, then that's going to be ideal. This is really frustrating. I don't understand why. Um, uh, it must have been, uh, it just must have been used. Do you know what it is as well? It's on left-handed. It's on left-handed. Let's try it. There you go. Can you see it just says left-handed? But if you... You can change it to left or right-handed, obviously. It doesn't, it doesn't matter with your blade. Um, I've probably picked the worst fabric for you. You can't see that, can you, on there? Can you see it? You can see the pinked edge. 
Thank you, Joe. Really lovely and quick, and that will then just mean that you're not going to get as much fray on your edges. £6.99, and you can use it, it is from Fiskars, but you can use it in conjunction with any of your 45 millimeter rotary cutters. Okay. Oh, why is that on left? Is John left-handed? That's really bizarre. I don't think Debbie's left-handed either, is she? It must have been put on for me. <laughs> no, I've not put it on. I've not put it on. Okay. Let's also do what, sorry? Five of five, basting your quilt. I know over the, the lockdown, lots of people have been finished, uh, finishing unfinished projects. Maybe you've done lots of piecing on your, uh, on your quilt of your, uh, your quilt top and you haven't got around to quilting it yet. If you do want to baste your quilt, this is a great option. We all have different ways of basting, whether it be thread basting, whether it be using curved safety pins, um, this is your spray based option. Just make sure you're doing it in a well ventilated area. £7.99. I know Debbie uses this, John uses this. Lots of our guest designers will talk about 505 spray. Uh, it is mentioned in Debbie's book. I shall find, there we go. So, adhesives. Um, talking about 505 spray, it's mentioned again there. 505 spray in Debbie's book. I know it's one that she uses, but it's perfect for fabric on fabric. So you spray it onto your wadding or spray it onto your fabric. In fact, that's a good point. Do you spray it at home onto your wadding or onto your quilt top? Think onto your wadding and then put your quilt top on the top. Just £7.99. Yeah, Lord recommends spraying it onto your wadding. This is one that is designed for fabrics and they will wash out. It's, it is an, um, a, a permanent adhesive, it's a temporary adhesive. £7.99, whenever we get them in, they're very, very popular. It's just a good chance to stock up your, all of your workroom stash, isn't it? The 404, I've not actually ever even done before. 404, now this is the one for stencils, templates, papers, can be temporary uh, attached, hold the items in place, ideal for pictures, photos, uh, or other creations in place. It says, so if you are trying to fix photographed fabric or um, so paper to fabric, £7.99. It is repositional as well. You can peel it off and replace it. I wonder whether we could stick fabric to the back wall. No. I'm not going to try and do it now, but £7.99. Would well, you want to do it? I'm not allowed to do it because it's not a well ventilated room. Just £4.99. Uh, English paper piecing as well, could you use it for? Laura's saying foundation paper piecing. Plastic, cardboard, drawing paper, plants as well. You could do leaves and, and plants as well. Uh, tissue paper, stabiliser, stencils. That's quite a good idea to be able to do stencils onto a quilt if you've got stencils and you want to do some free motion quilting, you could make your own sort of hearts or stars and then stick them down in place and then quilt round them so you know where they, they are instead of pinning it. That's a really good idea. £7.99, that's your 404. Okay. I've got so much. Beehive, pin cushion. Gosh, we've got loads of pins in here. This is so cute, isn't it? It's so cute and... um. It's another lovely gift idea, I think, for somebody. It doesn't come with any pins in, uh, but we've already managed to fill it with lots of pins. We always need plenty of pins, especially by your sewing machine. Those of you that have been watching The Great British Sewing Bee, maybe you know somebody. Oh, look, his little door. Maybe you know somebody that loves The Great British Sewing Bee. I'm going to miss it, are you? I can't believe how quick that's been. It only started during lockdown, and we've watched the whole series. Weird, isn't it? It's crazy. Although um, I haven't watched the final yet, please don't send me any spoilers. I haven't. I've been trying to avoid the Sewing Street fan page to uh, avoid spoilers. Jan messaged me saying, "Don't go on. We've been talking about it." Nine pounds ninety nine. It's just so cute and really lovely as a gift uh, gift idea for somebody. If you do like this print, we also have the nice tote bag. 
um, available on the website as well. And the Hexi little box as well. So if you do want to make the most of those, the, the Victorian Hexi Beehive. Just type in Beehive and you'll see all from the, uh, the collection on the web shop. Do you want to do the magnetic one? Different types of sort of pin cushions. I do like a magnetic one, I must say, because right, I'm going to take all these out. You do get some pins included in it. I think you get four, four pins that come with it. It's got a magnet on the back. So if you've got one of those trolleys that's uh, magnetic, then you could just put it onto the back of your trolley or wherever you want to store it, or just keep it as a dish um, or by the side of your sewing machine so that when you're sewing and you take out your pins, you can simply just throw them in or collect, literally, just collect them all up without losing any. Do you know, I, I've got like quite a big fluffy rug and uh, if you think, I'm, I'm sure I've left one of these, I've lost them in the, I've lost, I've lost them in the, uh, in the rug or I've lost it on the floor somewhere in the carpet and you can't find it, then this is so good to just quickly do a once over and it will pick up any of your pins, any of your safety pins. Any of your little metal um, clips. I wonder whether you wonder clips as well, because they've got a bit of metal in, haven't they? Any of your little scissors, you just keep them all in the nice little dish. £8.99. And how nice in the rose gold. We do love the rose gold. Looks stylish as well. Look, you can fit loads of pins. It does look quite dangerous, doesn't it? <laughs> that amount of pins in here. <laughs> Oh, I think Kerry used it last and she had loads of pins, so that's why I've got so many in here. Uh, you do get a couple of pins, as I said, I think there's four or five pins that come uh, with your dish. So if you are getting it as a gift, there's also some pins in there. But I'm sure you'll be able to fill it with plenty of pins. The purple fat quarters. Front to the desk. These are fantastic value for money. Oh, the early bird today, by the way, it's selling very, very quickly. If you do love fat quarters, then have a look at today's early bird. In fact, we'll have a look at it in a minute. These are so beautiful though. You're getting four really pretty fat quarters. Is it me or is it very sort of Liberty-esque? I must say, you've got these lovely ditzy prints, two with the lighter background and two with the darker. Um, your fat quarters though, really great sizes if you've got any of the Wendy Gardner books or any of the fat quarter books and you you know you, you want to know what to make with them it's so pretty ditzy print you're going to be able to do lots of your little sewing notiony bits with these it is very liberty-esque you then also got your navy I don't that's the darker blue. This is your ditzy floral. It's a lighter weight, it is a lighter weight cotton, but again, with your H640, you could make really lovely bags or cushions or all sorts with it. That'd be a really pretty cushion. And then this is my fave. I think this is so cool. It's really, yeah, this is really tropical. I love the colors on this. How nice is that? £7.99 for all of your four beautiful cotton fat quarters. They're lovely cuts. It does have a very designer-esque feel, I must say. It does. It's reminding us of lots of different designers. They're so lovely. Great colours and um, really fresh for the summer. I hope you're, uh, hope you're all keeping well and not too hot. Not too hot. What's it like where you are, Lynn? Lynn Sharp, was it by the sea? We had a message from Rachel. Oh, Rachel was talking about, so you know we're going to be doing the uh, every, I can't remember what date it is, every, once a month we're going to be doing the different door stops. And we've been asking you what shop you would like to see on Sewing Street. So, um, Rachel, hello, how are you? She said, morning, Vicky. Living my hairdo. Oh, this is just um, too hot, too hot. Too hot, throw it up. Door stop behind me. I hope they do a dressmaker studio. Yes. Yes. What would you like to see? Dressmaker studio is a really good one. I want a fish and chip shop, sweet shop. Hannah wants a, a hair salon or beauty salon. Or barbers. What would you like, Joe? 
What shop do you like? The pub. Sewing Street Pub. What are you going to call it? What about the Haberdashery Inn? Oh, no, we've already got the Haberdashery, which is the Haberdashery Shop. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Let's try and think of a name that we can call our Sewing Street Pub. Our fat quarters for the early bird today were... Oh, Joe, did you move them? Have we taken them away? Oh, no. Thank you. Our tartan ones. Now, these are woven, just so you know. They're all different textures. This fleecy one is gorgeous. I don't know whether you can see on screen, but it's got a lovely fluffy texture. Look at your price! Four fat quarters for £5.49. Oh, my word. That makes it less than £1.50 a fat quarter. It is today's early bird special. If you haven't already bought it, check out. We're, oh my word, we had hundreds of these. There's still a chance to get involved, but loads of you have taken advantage of that price. I'm not surprised. That's the lowest price I've ever seen fat quarters here. That's so good. And remember, they're nice and big. There's lots of beautiful, lots of beautiful fabric for less than six pounds. Less than five pounds fifty, in fact. That is a real early bird special price. Uh, we did a bit of a comparison earlier on. We found it. The best price we could find was eight pounds forty-four. £8.44. So fantastic. If you've bought something already, it's definitely worth adding that to your order if you're only paying one p and p today. I, uh, I keep looking on Pinterest and on YouTube and, and, and different things and it came up, I said this the other day, it came up on Pinterest something stupid like 80 odd, 80 something ways of using freezer paper with crafts. I mean, there's so many different ways of using it. And it wasn't actually initially designed for crafts. It's an American project which normally struggle to get here in the UK. So I think this is why we keep getting requests for it because it's so useful for applique, uh, for quilt applique. It's really, really useful for any of your sort of crafts, whether it be sketching, drawing, painting, making banners, different events, just get togethers. There's so many different ways of using it. As you can see, that side's shiny and the other side's matte. But this shiny side, it's not sticky, but it will, with a, if you press it onto fabric, I can show you if I want because my iron's on. I did. Now, I know that this is, um, this is, a, I'm just going to tear a bit off. Or I could use my scissors, couldn't I? Oh, these are my pinking shears. Probably not best to do it with. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going rogue like Debbie Shaw. Just got a little square. She does go rogue. If we've then got our fabric, this is a template, for example, of a flower or whatever shape you want. And you can literally use your iron and it will adhere to it. So that is now stuck. Um, I've seen Hannah using this with English paper piecing. If you've got all of your hexes and you've covered them and you've got your background, you can almost sort of iron them in place to where you want them, where you want them sort of to be if you want to applique them on. Uh, and then peel them off and stitch them as you go, hand stitch them together. It's really great for English paper piecing as well. So that's your freezer paper. It's only a temporary adhesive, you can peel it off and it's not going to leave any sort of sticky reg residue, but you can reuse these, reuse them and reuse them. £6.49. It was actually originally designed to, well, it is to wrap food, isn't it? Meat, it says. Yeah. But also fabulous for crafts, really good for crafting. So that's your freezer paper. You get loads, 12 metres of freezer paper for £6.49. Thanks, Joe. Okay. Right, what next, Laura? Beeswax. If you want to condition your thread, I talk about this actually over on, um, on our sister channel, Jewelry Maker as well, always very, very useful. And if you've already paid your postage and packaging, it's £2.49. It's just one of those, add to your up basket, add to your order whilst you can. Great to condition, condition your thread. I know a lot of people over the last few months have slowed down a bit of sewing, do some slow sewing, whether it be English paper piecing, whether it be uh, bag making or doing your lovely binding, the finishing touches, just a bit of slow sewing, cross stitch or embroidery. Um, beeswax is fantastic just to condition your thread. Makes it a bit stronger and more supple. That's going to last you forever as well, isn't it? £2.49. Seam ripper. This is going to be on and gone. 
This is literally on and gone. It is your Madeira seam ripper. It's a really nice quality one as well, because I've got one which, if I'm being honest, I think I got in a cracker or something stupid, and it's tiny. And um, I, I do need to get myself a proper one, especially when it's less than three pounds. If you're doing things like bargellos, they're really, really useful. Well, you're going to need one, obviously. But if I'm being brutally honest, if you are new to sewing, or even if you're advanced, we all make mistakes. My seam ripper was my worst enemy and my best friend at my classes. And it's got a really lovely, soft grip. So if you are doing lots of unpicking, it's good. Right, there's only four of them left. We're moving on. Sorry to disappoint. We haven't got many of those. These we talked about the other day and they are really good for your stash. Uh, just so you know, we are not charging you any more postage and packaging, even if you buy loads of these, which I find baffling because when I go to the post office, the first thing they tell you to do is put your parcel on the scales. I was sending back a coat, which was a raincoat, a very lightweight <laughs> raincoat. And I thought, oh, I thought it was gonna be free returns. It wasn't, um, but it cost me nine pounds to do it first class. I didn't go first class. I thought, my word, that's so expensive. I didn't realise how expensive postage is when you're sending things along. So it baffles me that we're including this if you buy a sewing machine that comes from Alna um, or from any of our, or for Juki or wherever you're buying a sewing machine, uh, whichever brand you're buying. And you can get all of our bits and bobs plus a kilogram of recycled pellets for £5.99 and one postage and packaging. Use a funnel if I were you as well. I've got into a bit of a mess with these before. But even if you're using a few of them at the bottom of these doorstops, I get them whilst you can. We've used them. We've used them just at the base here, um, just a handful of them, just to keep it stood there, maybe for the base of toys that you keep sort of s s sat on a shelf. It would just keep it sitting nicely. Um, also, well, there's loads of projects. There's loads of projects that these are really useful for. What about um, like draft excluders? Just £5.99, you get loads, a whole kilogram, and they are recycled pellets. Do I want to pick the next one? Yes. Um, I am going for the heat press batting together. I spoke about this earlier on. Do not throw away any of your wadding. We always say this with fabric, don't we? We've got a massive stash of fabric that we do not want to throw away. Here in our, in our studio, if anything's been cut up, we've got the larger ones, the medium size and smaller ones, and you can make incredible scrappy quilts. Same though with your wadding, do not throw anything away. This is your batting together, fused batting tape. So it's an American word for wadding. But if you've got small pieces of wadding, you can simply put this almost like um, a sashing between your two pieces of wadding, press it and it will fuse them together. It's great, isn't it? Seven ninety nine. You get loads on that roll as well. You've got. Let me see. Ten yards. What's that in meters? Good for your quilt as you go projects as well. Just seven pounds ninety nine. Just over nine meters. Loads. It's got some instructions on the back, but it's it's ever so easy to do. Um, it, it just tells you how to sort of use your iron basically and ironing with um, or without a Teflon sheet. So there you go, all your instructions are there as well. $7.99, I did mention that earlier and it's the first time I've actually seen it on air. I know I've talked about it a lot, so absolutely make the most of that. Yes. Mini pressing board. This is really cute. I just love anything that's like miniature. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But this is really good uh, for if you're doing sleeves, if you're a dressmaker and you're doing uh, getting right into those nitty gritty places. I still need this anyway for my home ironing. I can never, with a big ironing board, get to those sort of funny places. Laura, you're a master ironer, aren't you? She, uh, she's always ironing, always ironing. But look how gorgeous this is. If you're setting up your little station with your pressing mat, your cutting, sorry, your cutting mat, your sewing machine, you've got your little sleeve board. And even if you're, so you, obviously it's brilliant for bags or for, 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 for toy making. Um, it's lovely, isn't it? But also I'm thinking half square triangles or smaller, smaller quilting pieces. So cute. And it does pack down nice and flat so you can store it away. 
It's so gorgeous, isn't it? It's just cute. I just love the size of that. That's your mini pressing board. We've got a couple of rotary cutters now. So the 45 millimeter blade is the one that I would I would recommend to go for if you're starting out. Um, it's We do have smaller, and there are bigger available as well, but 45 millimeter is a fantastic one to go for because it's just sort of standard. It's, it's, it is your standard size. If you bought the wedding ring rulers earlier on, they recommend to use a 45 millimeter rotary cutter. It's £8.99 and this is the one that John Cole Morgan uses. This is the one that he likes. It's, it's literally just what you sort of get used to, um, but it's got the safety catch and you know how much John Cole Morgan talks about the safety of a rotary blade. Um, always remember to close the blade Easy to change as well. You can have it left or right-handed. It's got a lovely soft cushion grip and you can replace it with any of your standard 45 millimeter blades. You don't need to always replace your blade though. You can sharpen it in between. And I would recommend doing that, especially if you're cutting into your brand new gorgeous designer fabrics. You don't want to have a moment like I did earlier where I was like, ah, it's not doing it. Um, happened that I was, yes, using it in the wrong hand. But, um, uh, but yeah, it, it is important to make sure you work with a nice sharp rotary cutter when cutting your new fabric so you're not slashing it. Never cut towards yourself. Please, please, please don't. It's the amount of times I see it with dressmakers a lot as well, actually. I see it on, um, have you seen uh, the Great British Sewing Bee? They're using rotary cutters and sometimes I go, oh, please be careful. Because they're often doing it freehand and it just panics me, panics me. Uh, but only because my teacher was Adamant, never, ever cut towards yourself. Does £8.99 for your Millwood rotary cutter. As I said, though, you can get different sizes. So we've also got the 18 millimeter rotary cutter, which is so cute. It's so diddy. But right, what I would use this for is curves. So if you're going into some really quite intricate curves, then this might help. It's a bit less cumbersome than going in with a, a larger rotary blade. Another another um, reason I'd probably use an 18 millimeter is if I was doing foundation paper piecing. I think John often uses a smaller rotary cutter when he's doing his foundation paper piecing. Um, it, you get incredible accuracy, obviously. It's £9.99. It's another one of those things that if I were to say to you, look, if you're starting out, Get yourself a 45 millimeter blade. You don't necessarily need to get the whole collection, but if you are now expanding your workspace and you're expanding your workroom of different tools, then the 18 millimeter, again, is handy, as I say, for curves or, or, or for, you could just have this solely for your foundation paper piecing. How about like mini quilts, little mini quilts? This would be ideal for that as well, wouldn't it? Any of the scrap crazy quilts or any of your scrap, uh, the, the scrap quilts that we've seen? Just nine pounds, 99. Yes, my favourite marking tool. Now I know that Debbie mentions this as well in her quilting book. By the way, this book is absolutely flying out still, even though I know that we've got hundreds of people who have already had it. There you go, heat erasable pen. So different marking tools. There are lots of different marking tools. We're gonna to go for the black first. Um, there are lots of different marking tools that you can use. You can use air erasable, water erasable, you can use chalk. Water erasable, I find that you can be dabbing for quite quite some time. Uh, air erasable can disappear, especially if you're in an aircon room. Uh, chalk, I find personally can be a little messy. Therefore, my choice of marking tool is a friction pen. It wasn't actually uh, specially designed for sewers. It was designed to use on paper. So yes, let me get my um, pressing mat out and I can show you how it works. So if for example, I've got my freezer paper and I just want to, it will work on freezer paper. Yeah, it literally writes like a biro. It's a ballpoint sort of, is it ballpoint? Is that what it's called, a biro? It's literally like a ballpoint pen. And on the end of it, you've got your rubber. So you can use this on paper and rub out. I did my uh, wedding invites using this because I didn't want to make mistakes, but I also didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do it with, um, yeah, when I crossed Joe's name off the list. No, it, it meant that I didn't want to write them in pencil because I looked 
like a child. Whereas actually you can sort of make mistakes and just rub them out with that. So that's brilliant. But also why we love it as sewers is because you can do your markings on your fabric. I'll do it on the, the, the great thing about this color as well though, if, if, if you can see, you might not be able to see as well on television, but it's ever so clear. You can see it really, really clearly. Just for telly purposes, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it on the reverse just so you can see the line. Now always check that you're happy with how it disappears. If you're doing any of your quilting lines, if you're just marking your seam allowance, if you're starting out, if you're playing noughts and crosses, whatever you want to do. So you've done your markings and then watch this. Don't go anywhere, Joe. Gone, straight away. Just a heat of an iron. So, right, I'll do another one for you if you missed it because it's quick. There's my marking. Gone. This is what I mean, instead of dabbing a cloth or wiping your chalk or, you know, air erasable, it's actually, it's brilliant. Just check that you're always happy with how it erases, but it literally draws like a pen and then it will just disappear. The blue, it's nice to be able to have, I think, a bit of a, a selection of colours, just in case you're working with different fabrics and you want to know, um, you know, what colours go best or what show up best. So if you're marking your seam allowance, if you're doing any of your quilting patterns, pardon? I am left-handed. Once again, disappeared completely. Check that you're happy with how it disappears on your fabric before you start doing all your markers. But, oh, I must say though, because this is quite funny. It might possibly come back if you put your quilt in the freezer <laughs> or if you go on a plane, as you all do, <laughs> or if you're going, um, if you're going to a quilt competition, and you put it on, uh, if you put it in an overhead, in the overhead, or in the hold, sorry, of a plane, then because of the low temperatures, your markings potentially will come back. Uh, again, I know somebody who did all of their homework and laminated it using one of these, and laminators are hot, so straight away they just laminated a plain piece of paper, basically, or the markings gone. So do just be aware, obviously, with, Heat, obviously, it will disappear. Yeah, that's a new excuse, isn't it? For not doing your homework. I did do my homework, but I used a friction pen and it's disappeared. Um, so, yeah, just be aware. Very cold temperatures, it will reappear. And hot, it will disappear. So, there are your friction pens. £3.99 as well. Try it out. Have a go. New market tools. The, what, sorry? Sleeve roll. Absolutely. We talked about having the little mini pressing board. Similarly to this, you've probably seen these all over the Great British Sewing Bee as well. Um, really nice to be able to get into any of your sleeves or any of your uh, trouser legs, any of your uh, head on a, a, a toy or something. Getting into those intricate parts, it's just £8.99 for your sleeve roll. It's completely colour fast as well, I must say, so if you're using a delicate or a light fabric, then it's not going to bleed through. We've literally got minutes left. Can I show you one of the Fat Quarter books from Wendy Gardner? Uh, because we've had, as our early bird today, Fat Quarters, we've had lots of lovely Fat Quarters and lots of great fabrics today. And I love these books from Wendy. I'm literally gonna do a quick pit snap of them. This is the gifts first. 16 gorgeous projects, loads and loads to choose from in here and fantastic value for money. We're literally looking pence a project and it takes you through the season Seasons. Christmas crackers. Oh look, we learnt the flying geese, didn't we, earlier on with uh, with Catherine? Lunch bag now. Little tablet sleeves, eye masks. These are really great gift ideas for people. And a neck pillow. That'd be a nice gift for somebody. Scissor keepers. Makeup, but you could use this as makeup brushes. You could use it as art brushes. You could use it as crochet hooks. You could keep your tools in there. I've made myself a makeup roll and um, very, very useful uh, cosmetic pouch. These are all ones that you're gonna be able to remake and remake and remake for gifts, aren't you? Lots of great projects, 16 different projects, and then also all of your templates at the back and all of your, and look, there's even teddy bears and all sorts in here. Really nice transferable skill book. That's just £9.99. There is also the home one available on the website. Uh, we've also got a few other books that we haven't got around to do in weekend sewing as well is on there, but they're all on the website. Uh, is there anything else you want to squeeze in or recap? Mm. Just remember the early bird. 
Remember the wedding ring ruler? Uh, any of the bundles that we had, the Solan glue pen, there's lots of people checking out on all sorts. And also the heat wave deals. We are right into the, uh, the the thick of the heat wave now, aren't we? So absolutely stay safe and do make sure you're using plenty of sun cream. I was covered in Factor 50 yesterday. <gasps> Gosh, I was literally so pale because I was covered in Factor 50, but I've still caught the sun, haven't I? Uh, right, tomorrow, a brilliant show tomorrow. It is, of course, our lovely John Cole Morgan. He's going to be continuing the block of the week. Uh, before that, though, it's the Thread Doodling Buck launch. Very nice at eight o'clock. I saw his gemology one. It was so exciting, wasn't it, yesterday? At nine o'clock, it's the last block. Block 12, last block. Can you believe it? At 10 o'clock, he's got all quilting tools and rulers. And then we're going to repeat the, the demos from today's show, this morning's show, tomorrow at 11 and 12, if you missed it. Um, the next couple of hours, though, we are going to be repeating yesterday's show if you missed it. If not, absolutely get out into the garden if you can. Stay covered up, but do some nice slow sewing in the garden while can, because it's going to be stormy, I think, tomorrow, isn't it? It's not going to last, I don't think, so we've got to make the most of it. Anyway, it's been an absolute pleasure to be with you today. Thank you so much for your company. Check out your basket on anything you've seen. Enjoy the, the demos next, and I will see you on Saturday.